the two best teams in the best baseball conference in America do battle for the SEC Tournament Championship in front of more than 13,000. It's Alabama and Arkansas next. Just two. It is Championship Sunday at the 1999 SEC Baseball Tournament from Hoover Metropolitan Stadium just outside of Birmingham. And the top two teams in the Southeastern Conference will square off for the right to be called your 99 SEC Tourney Champs. And hello again, everybody. Dave Neal along with my partner, Darren Sutton. So glad you could join us. This will be the last of the five games that we've been able to bring you here at the SEC Tournament. And it's kind of, uh, I guess, rightful that the top two teams in the conference this year, Darren, will square off for the tournament championship. Arkansas wins the regular season championship. Alabama finished a game behind. Arkansas with 22 league wins. Alabama with 21. Now they're here in the championship game. And for Arkansas, they've had to play five games to get here. Alabama only three. Does one team have an advantage over the other when you get to this point? Well, numbers-wise, if you look at who has an advantage, you have to say Alabama has an advantage. They swept Arkansas this year, beat them three straight. But I think momentum-wise, Arkansas takes a little bit of the advantage. They had so much fun yesterday. Everybody in their bench, top to bottom, got a chance to contribute in two big wins. They're feeling it a little bit. They're feeling their oats. They're excited, and they're really playing as a team together. They kind of downplay. Uh, every coaches and players kind of downplay the tournament because the NCAA is just around right. the corner. But but you talk to both these teams, they want nothing more than to put some more hardware on their trophy case. Well, let's show you how Arkansas was able to get here, their road to the championship game. They beat Kentucky out of the gate 6-4, to four, but then they got stuck in the loser's bracket. They lost to Auburn by a run in a very close game. They had to come back, beat LSU, and yesterday they had to sweep Auburn in a double dip. 9-5, 9-6 were the scores. Now, for Alabama, the road was a little bit easier when you look at it, just three games, but look at the scores in those games. One-run game. And that really typifies the way Alabama played baseball, grit, and hanging on to games. But that typifies this whole tournament. When you talk about this tournament, nine of the 13 games, Dave, have been decided by two or less runs. That's the type of baseball we have in the SEC. Yeah, pitching other than a couple of games in this tournament has been the stronghold for this SEC tournament of 1999. You talk about during the regular season how offensive these clubs are, but it's been pitching has been the story. One guy that has stepped up offensively for Alabama and has carried them not only in the regular season, but in the postseason has been Mr. Andy Phillips, the senior shortstop. Well, uh, there was a moment late in the game yesterday, Dave, in the second win, the 13-12 to 12 win for Alabama, in which Jim Wells came out, grabbed Andy Phillips, then met with the pitcher. But he sent Phillips out to the outfield to talk with his outfielders. They had missed a cutoff man two times in the inning. Andy Phillips is that type of leader, almost an assistant coach, but the numbers are pretty darn good to go along with that as well. No question about it. You mentioned his leadership. When you play so many games in a short period of time, you need a guy that comes to the field, energized every single at-bat, every single play defensively. Andy's been that kind of guy, and he's picked up his whole team along the way. Yeah, and he really has, and this double he hit yesterday typifies it. As a matter of fact, in this ball game, he had an opportunity to hit for the cycle. This should have been a single. He turns it into a double, but then when he realizes he's safe, he calls timeout. Look at this excitement by Andy Phillips. This guy loves being at the ballpark. He was born for it. He's the type of guy that steps up at this time of year. Yeah, this is his time of the year. Postseason baseball for Mr. Andy Phillips. Now, when you talk about Arkansas, they had to win two yesterday against a very strong and well-rested Auburn team. They were able to win the nightcap by the score of 9-4. to four. Then they had to play the second game, and that is where we pick it up. The bottom of the first with Arkansas second baseman Mark Burnett, who, by the way, is hitting a ball three five twenty nine 29 for the tournament. He laces one down the right field line for a double, and the Razorbacks are threatening early in the game. That 
Matt would bring up Joe Jester. As Darren says, the table setter. Already with 10 total bases here at Hoover Met. He gets the first of his three hits on the night, singling home Burnett from second base and making the score one to nothing. Jester, always a threat on the base pass, then attempted to steal at second and advanced to third on what was the first in an era-filled night for the Auburn Tigers. He would come around to score, and Arkansas would go up to zip. Auburn answered with two runs of their own in the top of the third, but then gave them back on three errors in the bottom of the third. In the top of the fifth, Arkansas up 5-2. Malin Kent rips a bases loaded double to center field, giving Auburn the lead for the first time in the game. But once again, Arkansas would come storming back, scoring three runs on three more Auburn errors in the bottom of the sixth. The Tigers would wind up with seven errors, two wild pitches, and a hit batsman on the evening. But the real story of this particular game was Arkansas infielder turn pitcher Travis McDaniel. The junior who threw three no-hitters in his senior year of high school had never thrown a pitch in a college game. He came on in relief and threw four innings of scoreless ball to preserve a 9-6 victory for the Razorbacks. And, Darren, really, when you begin to sum up this tournament, for a team like Arkansas, battled all year, set a school record in terms of conference wins, the first ever SEC regular season championship, everybody has to be involved and everybody has to contribute. Travis McDaniel summed that up. You said it was uh, show me something Saturday. I think something along the step up Saturday. <laughs> he was able to pursue that dream, and he stepped it up. And wasn't it great to see a guy go out there and do that? This is what college baseball is all about. This is what you do not get in pro baseball. Here's a guy that walks down to his coach and says, give me the baseball. I want to help my team. And all he does is close out the ball game. Four, saw four plus solid innings. He was absolutely amazing. It was so much fun to watch. Well, we had Elimination Friday. Then we had Step It Up Saturday or Showdown Saturday. Now we've got Championship Sunday. It's Alabama and Arkansas for the title. We'll come back, talk with both head coaches. Stay with us. This is the SEC Tournament Championship. And welcome back to Hoover Metropolitan Stadium for Championship Sunday. As the number one seed, Arkansas Razorbacks, who picked up 41 wins during the regular season and this tournament, face the number two seed, the Alabama Crimson Tide, who won 45 games here in 1999. Both of these teams certainly looking to add one more win to that total. And certainly we are glad you could join us for this Championship Sunday between the Razorbacks and the Crimson Tide. And before we get started, my partner Darren Sutton has corralled the Arkansas head coach, a man who has had to see his team play five baseball games in this tournament. Norm DeBryan, the SEC Coach of the Year. Darren? All right, thank you very much, Dave. And Coach, I have to ask you, 30 years of baseball at Arkansas, you guys accomplished some amazing things yesterday. Middle infielders pitching and pitching well. Guys that have thrown eight innings pitching and pitching well. Have you ever seen anything like it? Nothing like yesterday. <laughs> I mean, you know, if I would have thought in the morning that we would have been through the double header and using uh, Bohannon and Hurley and McDaniel and all the success on the mound, I uh, I don't know if I'd have believed you. But it says something about the character of your team, doesn't it? It really does. Uh, we've got a uh, uh, we've talked about that pretty much all year. We've got a team that has some heart and some character. Uh, we've been down. We've gone into a skid this year, but uh, they come back and sometimes they find a way, uh, like yesterday. Along with character, too, sometimes you have to have a sense of humor, and I think that loosened the guys up yesterday, too, didn't it? It really did. I mean, you know, looking around the dugout, I mean, they were having fun. I mean, they were laughing. They were on the top step. Uh, they were cheering each other. They were picking each other up because of guys that were coming through and doing the job, and, you know, that's real good for a team. How much does this tournament mean to your program? Obviously, you're already the SEC champions, but now you're here. You have a chance to win it all. It's pretty important, isn't it? It really is. I mean, the thing we talked about is uh, the history of number one seed sometime or two and out and well we really didn't want to do that and uh, we wanted to represent the conference championship in the regular season the best we could and being today being here today is special on the field this team gets some things done not always with the long balls but a lot of different things on the field this is your first 40 win season in the SEC why on the field do these guys play so well well I think there's a, a complement of each other up and down the lineup like yesterday was the top of our lineup Burnett and Jester that made things happen happen. Earlier in the year, it was three-hole and four-hole, uh, Nye and Lundquist, and then we've had the bottom of the lineup like uh, McCrady and Kirby come through, so, you know, when somebody goes flat, somebody else seems to step up. The other thing, too, is running. 
Yes, we can run, and uh, we love to steal bases and uh, use a hit and run, use a short game some. And uh, right now, it seems like we're on a roll. Things are happening and going for us in, uh, in that part of the game. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate you being with us. Let's hand it over right now to my partner, Dave Neal. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Darren Sutton. And joining me right now is the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide, Jim Wells. And, Coach, it's, uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on this, playing a lot of games versus not playing very many at this time. Your team's played uh, three games, and you played them well. Uh, how big of an advantage is that in this situation when you get to championship Sunday? Well, it is an advantage, I think, if you have your pitching staff. It's certainly an advantage to us because we didn't have enough arms to play more than four games. So, But when you're in a regional or this tournament or Omaha, uh, yeah, this is what you want to be in. We've never been in this position all the years, so it's nice to be in it. Well, you're throwing a guy today, Jeremy Vaughn, who's thrown two innings for you. What do you expect to get? I see a little smirk come on your face. Do you know what you can expect, and what do you hope to get? Well, I'll tell you what. He's an academic scholarship guy. He usually gets a 4 0 so there's no doubt the smartest guy in the field is the uh, pitcher. <laughs> but he's got a chance to be good. We redshirted him last year. He throws 82 to 84, kind of like Marzion. Uh, a little nervous right now, but if he can get us a couple innings. He's, he's typical of some of the pitchers that have thrown late in this tournament. You know, people, I guess coaches and players even downplay a little bit the significance of this tournament because of the NCAA around the corner. But when you get here to a Sunday, all that goes out the window? One, yeah. one objective? Yeah, it really does. I mean, in the beginning you say that, but if you're fortunate enough to get this far, you're doing everything you can to win. And like Arkansas, they th they're bringing back their starter and they threw a shortstop. We have Andy Phillips, Jeremy Brown. We'll do whatever we have with what we have to try and win this game. When you look at uh, what you've accomplished here, you feel good about your baseball team right now as you approach the NCAA tournament? Yeah, we, we're hitting the ball well. We're playing pretty good defense, uh, stealing a lot of bases, which is uncommon for us. We just got to get Torres and Blankenship healthy for next week. But I think we'll be all right. Well, Coach, good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Jim Wells, head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. His team will be hosting an NCAA regional next week over at Sewell Thomas Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Well, we've got a pitcher that's been around the block a time or two, Wes McCrady for Arkansas, going up against a guy who really doesn't know what to expect, Jeremy Vaughn for Alabama. Stay with us. First pitch coming your way. This is the SEC Championship of the tournament from Hoover Metropolitan Stadium. Hey, they don't keep bankers' hours either. They have set record crowds here in 1999. Nobody thought that they would beat last year's attendance total. Well, guess what, folks? They're closing in on 100,000 fans coming through the turnstile since Wednesday, the day this tournament opened. And we're going to have an overflow crowd again today as Alabama, the number two seed, takes on the number one seed, the Arkansas Razorbacks. And let's take a look at how the Arkansas Razorbacks will go after the youngster, Jeremy Vaughn. Mark Burnett will lead things off, 308, hitting a, a solid 308. Joe, the table setter, Jester, hits second. Rodney Nye, hitting third, leads the team with 20 homers and 77 RBIs. Ryan Lundquist in the cleanup spot. His 19 doubles, good enough to tie for the team lead. Jack Welsh in center field. Scott Cross at your DH at 352, best average on the team. Ike Coley behind the plate. Brian Kirby in right, and Brad Hagedorn gets the start at first base due to Wes McCrady being on the mound. Alabama wears the home whites, and here is how they line up defensively. Scott McClanahan is in left. G.W. Keller is in center field. Eric Smallwood is in right field. Brent Boyd is at third. Andy Phillips is the shortstop, the leader, the All-American. Sam Bozanich, a solid second baseman, is there today. Jeremy Brown, one error in 1999, plays first. Kelly Gulledge will be important today behind home plate because Jeremy Vaughn, a right-hander, a redshirt freshman who has pitched two innings this season is on the mound. In the tournament, Burnett, 9 for 17 with a couple of doubles. But the big number, I believe, is he's 8 for 8 in stolen bases. Will face Vaughn. First pitch, misses upstairs. Talked to Jim Wells before the game. He said Vaughn was a little bit nervous, and rightfully so. Vaughn, just two innings pitched. He struck out one, walked two. Has yet to give up a hit. He's only faced six batters. This makes number seven here in 1999. And he runs the count to 3-0. and 
on Burnett, and you certainly don't want Burnett on the base pass in the top of the first inning with nobody down. There's a strike three and one. Darren, today's a big day for Jeremy Vaughn, but I think the guy that's going to have to carry him through the afternoon is his catcher, Kelly Gulledge. No, and it's very true. Kelly Gulledge knows what he has. That's his assignment today. Long talk with him prior to the game, and he realizes that he has to be the leader, set up, encourage him to hit his spots, have conversations with Vaughn when he needs to. Gulich is perfect for this, though. One of the finest catchers in the SEC. Popped him out of play. Arkansas and Alabama have not met in a tournament since the 1996 Western Division Tournament back in Starkville. Arkansas won that. 5-2 the first time they met, and they met later on in the tournament, and Alabama won that one 8-7. to seven. Adam 3-0, got it back to a full count, then eventually Vaughn walked Burnett. Burnett 20 of 22 overall this season on the base pass. And here comes your guy, the table setter. Well, somebody set the table for him already. Last night he had a runner on first, it happened to be Burnett, and he provided a big opportunity for this Arkansas team with a base hit right back up the middle. Joe Jester at 344. This conference very loaded with very talented shortstops. Jester amongst them. Phillips, the other one that you can talk about. Travis Chapman at Mississippi State. Just shortstops abound in the SEC in 99. Yo, one upstairs, one and one. You talk about the table setter and what he's done all year long in this tournament. The on-base percentage, Dave, is what I love because he takes a walk when he has to. He's been hit by a pitch a couple of times. That's why he's the table setter. Gosh, here we go. <laughs> that misses outside. Jester needs two runs scored today to tie an SEC tournament record for most runs scored in a series. Jester has nine heading into this afternoon's action. Charles de France of Bandy scored 11 in five games way back in 1980. Three and one. That young man out there, I can't even imagine the butterflies that he has and the nerves going into this game. It's such an opportunity, but he has to be nervous. Runner goes. Gulch won't even throw it because it's ball four. To back walks for Vaughn. Number 30, Rodney And you, you talked about the nervousness of a Vaughn. Well, there are people cracked into uh, every nook and cranny in this ballpark. They list the seating capacity. Now, the seats at close to 11,000. But they're going to have close to 15 today. But Vaughn is having trouble with his control. A packed crowd watching, too. Fastball up and nails the black. A couple of curveballs that miss. Then the fastball down, and he loses him upstairs. Ball four with the fastball. There you see right there, it's just location. Trying to figure out exactly how to find the strike zone. Two innings, folks. Two innings this season. And that is all he has gone. Rodney Nye steps in. 335. 77 RBIs. Could push that total to 80 with a long ball here. And Rodney Nye squaring around the bunt. Nine in the tournament, five for 19. Seven RBIs. Went three for 12 versus the Crimson Tide in the three-game set during the regular season. Shot to left field. That'll get in for a hit. But Clanahan hits the cutoff man, and the bases are juiced and nobody out. And here comes Ryan Lundquist. When you struggle to find the strike zone and you find it, all you're trying to do is get it over the white of the plate, and that is the tough thing about being young, being inexperienced, and then falling behind. The man who's the veteran, Rodney Nye, looking down the heart of the plate, and that's exactly where the pitch was. Well, now a tough situation for Jeremy Vaughn, the redshirt freshman. Lundquist, 14 homers, 
54 ribbies, 19 doubles. Jester, Nye, and Lundquist, the two, three, and four hitters for this team, all have 19 doubles to their credit. One and one to Lundquist. Lundquist in the tournament, five for 17. One homer, three RBIs. And Alabama trying to avoid getting behind early. They have yet to trail in this tournament. And that catches Kelly Gullick, but he'll be all right. And you, at this point, will give up one run or two to get through the inning, if you can. But the key is, for this young man out on the mound, and we're not talking about two innings in conference. We're talking about two innings that are games that in the big picture are, are really meaningless, midweek games. If he can get through the first inning with a runner to get back in that dugout, suddenly he becomes a little more experienced. Arkansas has outscored their opponents 13-2 to in the first inning of this tournament. And how about the strikeout from the freshman, getting Ryan Lundquist. One of the most difficult outs in the entire country. Nasty slider, stays away, breaks away, and that is an incredible pitch and a good job by Kelly Gulledge getting out there for his pitcher. And that's exactly what you talked about, Dave, working hard behind home plate, even more so than he already does. And what a feeling to hear 12,000 cheer when you pick up a strikeout. And that's a low guess. The Jack West. Welsh in the tournament, three for 20. <laughs> Gullich might have been saying, I was looking for the fastball there. It was first sign after the number two. I gave you the fastball. Let's uh, get back in there. <laughs> oh, the nerves. Bases loaded, one down. In the dirt, one and one. Line foul, one and two. Vaughn in front. Sometimes you can make a mistake, and it's such a good mistake, and it helps yourself out. That's a totally unhittable pitch up and out of the strike zone. But hacking at it, Jack Welsh picked up strike two, and suddenly back into the driver's seat goes Jeremy Vaughn. Arkansas is grounded into six double plays in the tournament. Vaughn would love one more here. Arkansas just looking for a base hit, even a sacrifice fly at this time. Back to back strikeouts. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Unbelievable sequence of pitches. The slider down and in. Then the off speed pitch misses out of the zone. He helps him out chasing a fastball up, and then the changeup just falls right out of the strike zone. What a way to pitch against the left handed hitter, and it's tougher pitching against the lefty early on in the ballgame than a righty. Scott Cross it looks and a strike. This is no easy out. His 352 average, best on the team. Hitting four for 21 in the tournament. Cross it closes in on the plate. And here comes the 22nd pitch by Jeremy Vaughn in the first inning. Smart right there by Cross to step out of the zone. He feels Vaughn locking in, and the young man, he knows he's nervous, wants to keep those nerves with him. Base is loaded. Two walks and a single. Burnett is at third. Jester is at second. Rodney Nye at first. Went outside with it. Cross it laid off. One and one. Two down in the inning. Missed again. Two and one. Good job by Kelly Gullich. Continuing to work hard by behind home plate. Knowing this young man a little bit erratic, and he's on his toes back there. Cross it. In a good spot here with a two and one count. And a young pitcher on the mound. 
trying to get out of what has been a early inning predicament. Missed upstairs three and one. Oh boy, Crossett licking his chops now. And this is the type of hitter he is, too. He's not the most gifted. He's not a power hitter, but a super, super contact hitter around the plate, and you're in trouble. Line to second over the head of the second baseman, Bozanich. One run is in. Burnett touches home. Here comes the second run. Jester throw cut off 2 nothing. Scott Crossett had Vaughn right where he wanted him in the crosshairs. And he hit the 3-1 pitch to right field. Two runs score. Vaughn so close to getting out of it. Unbelievable. This is what we've talked about. He's a guy that doesn't try and pull the baseball and do too much, but he wants you to throw it around the strike zone because he's just going to lay it into the outfield. And there you see the runs coming across. Mark Burnett and Joe Jester. The table sack. He's off the table. <laughs> he's back in the kitchen. <laughs> so now he's at second. Cross it at first. Gulich out there. Jim Wells just made the visit head coach of Alabama to remind Jeremy Vaughn what he had accomplished prior to that at bat. Remind him that you do belong out here. You've already showed it. So continue to work the strike zone and stick with Kelly Gulich. Ike Poley, no easy out. 300 hitter this season. Five homers, 33 RBIs. In the tournament, he's two for 12. Great pitch in four strikes. How about the bomb he hit yesterday? As we were talking about how hard it is to get it out of this ballpark. He left the yard and left it easily. Only seven home runs have been hit in this tournament. Yeah. Probably hit perhaps the loudest and longest home run. Oh my goodness. See all those motorhomes out there? You can see him out behind left field. He made a run at him. Not quite there, but he made a run at him. Throw back. A little bit high. If Vaughn gets that throw down, Phillips has a play. But a good sign right there. This is a guy that's not in the ball game at all, all year long. But he works well with Phillips. Phillips gives him the sign, and he gets it to second base. That's another good sign for the game. Poley with 20 home runs a year ago. This year, just five. Power numbers down. One and two to count. And that's that slider that's so difficult to hit for right-handed hitters. He's a fastball, a slider that we've seen, and then a changeup. He'll throw the changeup more to lefties. The slider to righties. Two on. Two down. Two have already crossed the plate. In the dirt, breaking pitch. Now he's going for third. Gullich pump fake to second. Thought about trying to get cross it. Held on to it. Runners advance. That's a wild pitch for Vaughn. The wise choice right there by Kelly Gullich. The last thing you want to do is throw a ball into center field. Good job blocking it up. It's just a heartbreaking slider that gets away. Coming into third base was Nye. He thought his play was with Crossett at second, but he decided to hold it. Focus on the hitter. Throw back to second. Close play again. Phillips not shy about laying a heavy tag out there at second either. <laughs> a lot of first basemen I played with used to do that. The all-white. White. Yeah, I was going to say the all-white uniform. Strikeouts for Jeremy Vaughn. But Arkansas picks up two on two hits. No errors, they leave two. But Vaughn strikes out. We are back at Hoover Metropolitan Stadium. Arkansas strikes for two in the first, but I think they might be a little bit shocked that they didn't get more than that. Nobody out base is loaded. 
And they can only manage a couple of runs. Let's check out the Alabama batting order. Brent Boyd at third base will lead things off. Sam Bozan, it's been struggling of late. Will hit second, moves up in the lineup. Andy Phillips, G.W. Keller at three and four. They have been in that, that position throughout the season. 403 and 389 respectively. Jeremy Brown at first. Kelly Gullis behind the plate. Jason Cox is your D.H. Scott McClanahan in left field. And Eric Smallwood is in right. Arkansas this afternoon wearing the dark jerseys. Here's how they line up defensively. The senior Lundquist in left. Jack Welsh in center. Brian Kirby in right field. Around the infield they go like this. Rodney Nye, Joe Jester, Mark Burnett, and Brad Hagedorn. Ike Coley, outstanding defensive catcher behind the plate. And the lefty, the versatile man on the mound, Wes McCrotty. The sophomore out of Russellville, Arkansas. <laughs> We saw McCrotty a few weeks ago against Ole Miss. Not have his best stuff, but battled throughout. Picked up a win on Saturday. Boyd hammers that down the left field line. Just foul. There are McCrotty's numbers. Five and one in ERA, five and a half. Has one complete game. Started 11 games, but has many more appearances than that. Strikeouts are impressive for Wes. 71. Slow roll to third. Tough play for nine. makes the tag. Close play at first. Nye threw it to the inside part of the bag down the line, but Hagedorn puts the tag on him. Throwing this on the move, off the bare hand. You don't know where the ball will go. Let's take one more look. Bang, bang play at first base. It looked like he may have tagged him with his foot on the bag, but it was close enough and a spectacular play on both ends of the infield there by Arkansas. And that'll pump up the pitcher. John Magnuson over at first base made the call. Bozanich looking for his first hit of the tournament. He's 0 for 11. Jim Wells moving him up in the lineup. Slow roller to short. Jester comes up firing, throws a strike. That's an easy call for John Magnuson. Two down in the inning. On a hot day, Wes McCrotty couldn't ask for a better start. No, a good start throwing strikes. What you'll see is the fastball. The changeup is the key pitch. He'll also throw a big breaking curveball. He actually pitched in game one against Kentucky in a 6-4 to win, worked seven solid innings, striking out seven, allowing just three runs. Of his eight hits, he allowed a lot of extra base hits. Four of those were doubles. Andy Phillips, the shortstop. The emotional leader of this team. And the statistical leader as well. 403, 18 homers. Wins and misses. 16 doubles. Phillips' sixth inning home run off West McCrotty back on April 25th was his 51st career home run. That made him Alabama's all-time home run leader. Ground ball to second. Hard charging. Mark Burnett comes up firing a throw. And that goes out of play, and Phillips will end up at second. Score that an error on the second baseman, Mark Burnett. This is not an easy play. You're throwing on the run, running away from first base, and you see where Andy Phillips was, but the error is the correct call, and when it goes out of play, that's when you automatically get the other base. Boy, it's been busy around the infield. Early on in this ball game, all three guys had tough opportunities. Everybody in the infield has had a chance to make a play and touch the ball today. We're only in the bottom of the first. G.W. Keller. 389, 63 ribbies, a chance to add to that total. Keller three for seven in the tournament. the people that say Andy Phillips is the best player on this Alabama team. There are many who say that G.W. Keller is the most talented in raw baseball skills on this Alabama baseball team. Goes to 3-0 on G.W. McCrotty being very careful. On deck, the freshman Jeremy Brown. Excuse me, it's 2-1, not 3-0. Scoreboard has that wrong. There they go. They must be listening to me. But there's Jeremy Brown. 
you and Ken Couch, home plate umpire, who was holding up the two and one over his head. Inside, three and one. BW is a pretty good tournament. Four twenty nine average, five ribbies, three runs scored, slugging percentage five seventy one. And he walks. So Phillips and Keller, who are one and three in all time Alabama history and runs scored, are on on base with two down. And that was totally and completely an unintentional, intentional walk, just because of the fact that there is a base open and G.W. Keller has earned the right to see a steady diet just like that. And if you take yourself back to the Alabama-Mississippi State game, the same thing happened. Jeremy Brown doubled in three runs. Pitched around Keller. Brown got the opportunity and stepped up on it. Step up Saturday. Jeremy Brown behind 0 and 1. Phillips at second, Keller at first. Well, Alabama, the only team in the conference hit over 100 home runs this season, which is uh, due in part to the bats, A, pitching B, but that's a lot of home runs. They haven't hit one. That just misses. But they have not hit one in this tournament. But 102 during the regular season. Jeremy Brown hit 13 of those. Freshman record at Alabama. His 54 RBIs, also a freshman record. And head coach Jim Wells. My favorite quote from him is when he says that he will give Phillips and Keller a run at the records at this school. That's a compliment from a freshman from your head coach. Friday got two quick outs, but has had to battle since. And Brown battling at the plate. And it is a hot day. He who gets his team back into the dugout the quickest may be rewarded the most at the plate for his batters because it is sweltering and they're doing their work out there defensively already. It's all Burnett sneaking behind Phillips. And Andy Phillips probably feeling pretty good now. Got a little dirt. And he's ready. On that pant leg. Shot down the third baseline. How about the stab from Rodney Knott? He has made play after play at third base throughout this tournament. No runs on no hits. One error by Arkansas. Two left on base. We move to the second. Great play by Rodney Knott. Sunshine. Rodney Nye pitched in this tournament and pitched pretty well. But he plays third base about as well as anybody in the country. Here's a, a look at that last out. Brown's a dead pole hitter and he knows that he's defensively playing him well. But he gets over there and gets to the bag as quickly as he can. Brian Kirby steps in for Arkansas in a 2 to nothing game. And Jeremy Vaughn. It's about to equal the amount of innings he's pitched all season. <laughs> As he works in the second. And yes, that's right. He's only thrown two innings this entire 99 season. And you know Arkansas, though, will not take him lightly after they watched their bench clear yesterday and guys go out who had never pitched and basically win their way into the championship. Three pitches strikes. Kirby goes down. Strikeout number four already. Against the left-hander, the slider. Starts up in the zone, stays up in the zone, but a good leg tight break made it an unhittable pitch. And you see right there, Kirby taking a big hack. He thought he was right on it, but it had enough late break to get it done. I will say this, Darren. If he hangs that curveball again later in the day, Arkansas, their order of good enough hitters, they will hammer that pitch. He's going to have to keep it down in the strike zone. He can get away with it here late in the inning, late in the game. Uh, that won't be the case. Is he going to strike everybody out today? Well, four outs, four strikeouts. Pretty good ratio <laughs> at this point. 
He's about to equal Darren Sutton's college career total right now. Six is actually my <laughs> college career in the eight wins I got in four years. And I like that last pitch right there, 0-1. Oh, you saw Gulich get way inside, and that was right off the knuckles of Brad Hagedorn. Misses inside. That's the first pitch that wasn't a strike in this inning. Ground ball. Phillips. And the first put out by somebody other than Jeremy Vaughn. <laughs> Two down in the inning. Good pitch once again in this beautiful ballpark to get that ground out. What a gorgeous day it is here. And this ballpark, I can't believe that we have played this many ball games, 14, and it still looks as flawless as it does. He's back at the top of the order now, Dave, so he's seen them for a second time, and they in turn are seeing Jeremy Vaughn for a second time. But I guarantee you going through one inning, surviving it, only allowing two runs and getting back in the dugout has really built his confidence up, and it's evident already here in the second inning. That's a strike 21 to Burnett. Burnett Walk came around to score. We would like to welcome those of you watching on Fox Sports Southwest as we come to you from Hoover Metropolitan Stadium in Hoover, Alabama, just outside of Birmingham for the 1999 SEC Baseball Tournament Championship game between the top two teams in the Southeastern Conference, Alabama and Arkansas. I am Dave Neal, joined by Darren Sutton. We are in the top of the second inning, 2 to nothing, Arkansas with the lead. And a great day for baseball, and Burnett walks for the second time in this game. So glad you could join us because this has been a tremendous tournament already. Aaron has mentioned that nine of the 13 games played have been decided by two runs or less. Throw back to first, not in time. That's in there for a strike. And for those of you just joining us, we're watching a man on the mound who has worked two innings all season long. One against Niagara, one against UAB. Obviously, no decisions in those two ball games. He gets to start on Championship Sunday, and it's Jeremy Vaughn. Line drive into right field by Jester. Smallwood comes in, makes the catch. It wasn't one, two, three, but three down close. Vaughn survives the second. Arkansas still leads by two. Those are the overflow seats at Hoover Metropolitan Stadium. They put those in in case there might be some extra fans. Well, I think they got a little more than what they were counting on here. This place Look seats that. close to 11,000, but they have, of course, the grassy areas down the lines on both sides. But this could creep up to around 16,000 when it's all said and done. And here's what the tournament attendance has been like. They have surpassed the total of a year ago, and they're closing in, Darren, on 100 thousand fans at this SEC baseball tournament. You will not find more loyal fans for any sport than college baseball in the Southeastern Conference. This has turned out to be uh, truly a special week here at Hoover. Just a few miles away from downtown Birmingham, Alabama. Kelly Gulledge steps in, the catcher, one and one. There was even an article in the paper today, Darren, about it. It was kind of facetious, <laughs> but when you look at this, that this tournament might be outgrowing this stadium. And who would have thought that? Line drive to left field off the bat of Kelly Gullick. Kelly Gullich, 
with a shot to left field. Alabama's first home run in this tournament makes it a one-run game, and for Kelly Gulledge, that is home run number nine on the year. Goes down and gets the pitch. That was ankle high on the outer half, and that shows you how strong the catcher is, Kelly Gulledge. And Dave, I don't care if they're playing this game in Birmingham or in Turner Field, that is out of any ballpark that these guys have played in all year long. That ball was flat out crushed. It hit the second fence out there with all the advertisements on it, but it was still moving and moving well. You see right there the two fences, but if it gets over the lower fence, it's, uh, as you said, goodbye baseball. Slow roller, now I can't make a play. But Planahan laid it down perfectly. There are only a few spots that are deadly when you lay down the bunt against this Arkansas defense, and McClanahan found a spot. It's always deadly, too, when you lay down a bunt. The next batter or two batters following a big shot home run because the pitcher is still thinking about the home run. The defense in their mind plays back a couple of steps. That was a great bunt, great timing by Scott McClanahan. That home run, the tenth given up by McCrotty this year. Karate averages about one home run per nine innings, so he's probably thinking, I got that out of my system. <laughs> Let's move on. Smallwood, the man at the plate right now, is, was actually a high school teammate with the man on the mound for his team and Jeremy Vaughn. So he's out there from Tate High School in Gonzales, Florida, trying to help out his young partner. Good baseball school, Tate High School, historically. That'll be a wild pitch. McClanahan down at second. One down in the inning, and it's 2-0 and oh to Eric Smallwood. And Smallwood in the tournament, 5 for 12. Ike Poley gets out there, was not able to get his body in front of that ball. That's why it went so far. He almost used his arm as a ramp for the ball to run right up. If he was able to get his body there, he probably knocks that one down. This is outside, 3-0. and oh. strike three and one for the Razorbacks this is their second time in consecutive years that they have been in this championship tilt Auburn got them last year 7-5 in the title game ground ball hit fouled on the first baseline full count three and two on Smallwood on deck Brent Boyd the leadoff batter grounded out his first time up there is Norm DeBryan, the SEC Coach of the Year. Wedged in between those two bodies. He has been down this road before. It'd take a lot to get his higher up. Runner goes for third, in there. Smallwood safely in, stolen base number five for him. Or excuse me, McClanahan, that's stolen base number four for him. Strikeout at the plate is out number two. And in some ways, we're watching the sophomore Wes McCrotty make some of the same mistakes we expect out of the Red Surf freshman and Jeremy Vaughn. He had a huge jump. He could have walked the second base with that jump. But he got the strikeout and out number two. And that's a big out. Yeah, he made the quality pitch, absolutely. Yeah, you see he's gone. You saw him at the bottom of your screen. He snuck right through there. Good throw down to second base, but it's a much shorter throw, obviously, to third than to second. Sometimes it's hard, though, Dave, to divide your mind into the slots where the runner needs to go and the batter and hitting your spots and pitch selection. There are times, quite frankly, as a pitcher in a big game, especially as a sophomore, where there's just too much to think about. Swing and a miss. Great off-speed pitch from McCrotty. Two and one. Brent Boyd has hit safely in all three games versus Arkansas during the regular season, including a solo shot. 
Another look at that pitch you're talking about. That's that slider. It's tight breaking. Drops his arm angle down just a little bit, but to a righty, that's deadly. In the dirt, nice play by Poli behind the plate. Tried to get him to chase it again down in the strike zone right there. It's so nasty because it, the slider comes towards the plate in the other side of the batter's box for a right-handed hitter. It's the left-handed side of the batter's box and crosses the plate very late. Just heat. And Boyd couldn't catch it. And it's amazing, too. This afternoon on our scoreboard, we actually have the velocity from our jugs gun down below. You can set up a fastball, that last fastball, 82 miles an hour, but you can set it up with the off-speed pitch and make it look 95 and blow it by hitters. Foley tried to frame it. Boyd walks to first. And Sam Bozanich steps in. Sam now 0 for 12 in the tournament. Sam hit close to 300 during the regular season, but has just found himself in a world of hurt offensively during the tournament. And you're not going to take a guy like him out of the lineup because as soon as he gets it rolling, he can get as hot as anybody, and his defense speaks for itself. One of the best second basemen, second basemen in this conference. And that's a position, second base, where you can give just a little bit if you have to, as well as center field. If you have to have his glove there, as long as he's helping the team enough at the plate, you're right, he will come around, and he is spectacular at second, working with Andy Phillips at short. Great pitch. Strike going one. First and third, there's two down. Kelly Gulledge with a home run to left. The lone Alabama run. First batter up this inning. Bozanich focusing in, looking for his third career hit in the tournament. He's two for 34 right now. And when does that begin to... As a player, you've got to know you're struggling in situations. Does he know that he's two for 34 in, the, in tournaments? Oh, you are darn right he knows, and he thinks about it all the time. Just like anything else in life, when you struggle, you're thinking about it more and more. When you lock in, you don't think about it as much. And what he's struggling with right now is when you get into a rut and you're a natural dead pole hitter in high school and you get to college, you learn to use the aluminum bat and use the whole field. He's now gone back to trying to pull the baseball only. You can see his stance. He's still slightly open on his stance right now. He might do him a little bit better to close up just a hair and just try and hit the ball to right field every time. Bozanich steps out. Boyd was going down at first base. He thought he had a great jump and would have got there safely. And by stepping out, though, he tipped off Arkansas to their plans. Bozanich laid off at one and two. But that's the pitch right there, up and away. It's good for a hitter. It's something you could shoot the other way, but it's something, if you're opening up, you can't even think about handling that pitch outside. There goes Boyd. Pitch out. Poley. Here comes the runner. to get to third, and he is nailed. Boyd tried to sneak it over to third with nobody paying attention. Here's Boyd taking off for second. Steals it easily, then the throw down. Coming over to cover is Burnett. He comes home, and a great slide at the plate right there, getting around the leg. Incredible slide as Alabama steals a run, Dave. We're tied at two. Hey, baby. We're tied at two. One Arkansas error. We move to the top of the third inning. Rodney Nye steps in. On that play moments ago, give McClanahan a stolen base as he swiped home plate. Also give Brent Boyd a stolen base, but then 2-4, 2-5. Nails him at third to end the inning, and Bozanich will step up and lead off the inning for the Crimson Tide. That's your old locker combination? 2-4, 2-5. Sure it is. I was I didn't want to get near the lockers. I was afraid somebody might stuff me in there. <laughs> kind of like 
being stuffed into your Yugo on your drive home. That'll be nice. 0-2 oh, to Rodney Nye. I think all this action on the field, Dave, the stolen bases, all the excitement in the crowd has maybe helped Jeremy Vaughn relax just a little bit. He doesn't feel like watching him out in the center of all the action right now. Rodney Nye, though, with a great eye at the plate, laid off at one and two. Here's why he doesn't get it. You saw where Kelly Gullick set up. He was all the way inside. That was a strike, but he had to go reach out on the outer half to get it. That's when you lose the call. High pop fly. Everybody calling for it. Andy Phillips finally makes the decision and gets the out. One down in the inning. Cooler heads prevailed, and the team leader decided to call everybody off because the man out on the mound, who really in most cases is supposed to be directing traffic, is just trying to keep his butterflies flying in formation, not worrying about that kind of stuff. So Phillips calls everybody off and makes the play. He had the best angle, though, running into the baseball. Strike to Ryan Lundquist, who struck out his first time up with the bases loaded and nobody down. Lundquist, five strikeouts and 18 at-bats in this tournament. And he's just looking for a pitch after that last at-bat. Now that he can drive, he's seen the young man come over the heart of the plate. That's the pitch he's looking for, something straight and something that's a strike. Two and one to Lundquist. His numbers are down from a year ago, but yet I think his stock may have increased. Defensively, he played as well as anybody this year in the outfield. High fly ball, left field, long run, McClanahan. He makes the catch. Out number two. <laughs> as Lundquist is retired, from what you've heard and talked to folks about Ryan, you believe his stock has gone up as well? Oh, absolutely. He was a 10th round draft pick last year. I believe he has an opportunity to go higher in the draft as a senior this year. He may not see the money because you lose some of that leverage as a senior. But I think at the next level, he will be an outstanding ball player. Numbers at times can be deceiving. And I think Ryan Lundquist is case in point. You look at his body type, how strong he is, how fast he runs for his size. Defensively, he has power, has a good arm. He, he will play a long time at the next level. And as we have seen, will run through a wall to make a catch. We talk about Andy Phillips as a guy that leads this Alabama team with emotion. Ryan Lundquist plays as hard as anybody for this Arkansas team. Jack Welsh, 3 for 21 in the tournament. All singles, 0 for 1 today. Ground ball, back up the middle. Tough play. Gets through. Bozanich and Phillips. That's a hit for Jack Welsh, his fourth of the tournament. Jeremy Vaughn can once again rest assured, though, that he made a solid pitch right there. Back in the first, though, he was battling himself a little bit. Couple of walks and a single, and then Scott Cross had got a pitch right down the middle of the plate, and he never overswings. Hit it into right field. Two runs came across, and Arkansas struck first. You thought it might be doomed for Vaughn, but Dave, he's really battled back from that inning. He struck out two batters, and then it was Cross it who delivered the two out, two RBI single to right. Two down the inning right now. Welsh over at first with 20 stolen bases and 22 attempts. And there he goes. Gullich is throw. It's a good one. Bang, bang. It's second. And give the stolen base to Jack Welsh, number 21 of the year. Perfect. Thus far on the tournament, Arkansas now 23 of 23 in stolen bases. And it has truly been the base runner's revenge as we take one more look at the throwdown by Gulich. He gets everything he can on this one. Just missed him with the tag. Got him in the back of the leg after the foot came in. Base runners in this tournament, the entire tournament, are 35 of 36 in stolen bases. The catchers have really taken a beating in this tournament. Well, Arkansas's 23 stolen bases heading into uh, today's game. Actually, now 23 stolen bases. 
are already a tournament record. The previous high, Darren, to show you how explosive they have been on the bait pass. 14 was the previous high set in 94. That's just how this Arkansas team plays baseball, though. Use their artificial turf in their ballpark, slap the ball, and run like the wind. Two and two. Stolen bakes won't mean anything if Jeremy Vaughn can get cross it here. Once again, it's the perfect hitter, though. A guy that doesn't try an overswing and drive the ball out of the park. He's a guy that chokes down and just tries to put it in play. Not always pretty, but he gets the job done. He kept it in play. It's a slow roller with a funny spin right to Jeremy Brown, and that'll do it for Arkansas. No runs. One hit, no errors. They leave one. We're tied at two. Back for the bottom of number three in a moment. We move to the bottom of the third, tied at two. This is appropriate for this tournament. Nine of 13 games decided by two runs or less as we move to the bottom of the third. Folks, we still have a couple of more SEC TV weekly shows coming your way. Next week, we travel to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, as the Crimson Tide will host a regional, as will this Arkansas team, Auburn and LSU. But we will be in Tuscaloosa. Joining Jim Wells and company, get you set for the upcoming regionals of the NCAA baseball tournament. We'll also get you caught up on what's been happening on the national scene and spring sports for the Southeastern Conference. It's been a great year for the SEC down the stretch. By the way, Darren, do you realize that our last SEC TV weekly show, which was yesterday live from this ballpark, number 150. Really? That is correct. Congratulations. Thank then. you very much. Haven't missed one yet. 150 shows. Two more to go this season. We'll take the summer off. Join you again in the fall. You should be proud of that. Yeah, if you got to hang your hat on something, why not? Well, you can't hang it on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam Bozanich, as we mentioned earlier, has been struggling in this tournament. But, he, you know, he got off to a slow start earlier this year. After 12 games, he was just 3 for 36. Uh, that's, that's a 081 clip. Well, he finished up the regular season hitting 288. And that includes what he's done in this tournament where he's gone hitless in 12 at bats. So Sam Bozanich is a guy that uh, once he once he gets out of this little funk that he's in, he'll be all right. Jim Wells hopes it today because you don't want to take this with you to the NCAA tournament the pressure of looking for a hit. And it will continue to his next at-bat as he strikes out. Out number one. And the first strikeout, actually the second strikeout of the game for Wes McCrotty. And we talked about it, Dave, when he was up in his last at-bat, or actually the last inning with the runners on base. You're pulling off, trying to pull everything, and that pitch that runs away, you don't even think about handling it. And that's what he's fighting right now. I guarantee you this week, they're just going to put him in the cage and work on going to right field over and over again. Andy Phillips pops it up, a mile in the air. Ryan Lundquist literally camps out in left field. Makes the easy out. But for Sam Bozanich, I think what's important when you talk about his struggles, yes, he will break out of them. I think the important thing to understand is at a young age that he is playing in this pressure and at this level, he still doesn't let it affect his defense. And that is a tribute to him. That's not easy to do. There is Sam, still frustrated. You know, no matter what career you have, what job you have, there's always a time when you struggle. You're in a slump. We all know what he's going through. I have a pretty good feeling that his mom's lucky cookies will help him break out of it. Well, you know what? She came by, gave us some cookies, and, you know, we're having a mediocre game, which for us is a huge step up for us. Yeah, to, to step up and bring cookies up, this is Bozanich. It was it was just a a great call. That's why we know Sam will break out of it. But oh, 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 very superstitious, by the way. <laughs> but it's a huge step up for us just to get to mediocre. Oh, absolutely. Now I see what you said. I wasn't even listening to what you were saying. That's, as usual. That's, just, that's why we're just mediocre, and we'll never be any better than that. She did want to send a message home, though, Sam's mom. 
to the 16-year-old brother, Tug, who doesn't have his license yet, but she kind of got the message and heard through the grapevine that he's already driving a little bit out there. And she wanted to let Tug know that she knows that he's driving and he's in trouble when she gets home. Three and two to Keller. You know way too much about the Bozanich family. I don't even want to know where you get that kind of information. I'm down here talking to players about swings. Oh, don't start at saying that when I'm here at 7 a.m. <laughs> talking to players over coffee. Line drive just past shortstop Joe Jester. Big turn for Keller. He'll head back to first. Don't be so insensitive. Insensitive or sensitive? Sensitive. a boy. Amazing bat speed for G.W. Keller. You see the weight shift, but it stays back until the pitch arrives, and he explodes through the zone. Now on the base pads, the man who's the cleanup hitter is the biggest threat on the team. This is why he's the best all-around player ability-wise on this team. Throw back to first. Jeremy Brown, the first baseman. Jeremy grounded out his first time up. There's two outs in the inning. That misses inside. It's one and oh. Jeremy went through the season, the regular season, all the way to the last game of the regular season before he made an error. Close to 500 opportunities to make an error. And he didn't do it until the last game of the regular season. He's another guy too, Dave, a young, aggressive hitter. Loves to pull the baseball. You can beat him away, but if you make a mistake in, you are dead. Popped him up left field. Another ball that hit a mile in the air, and Lundquist with a couple of putouts. No damage done, and we are through three innings. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on a base. And we are tied at two with both teams amassing three hits. And so far, it's been a pretty good pitching performance by both the youngsters, Wes McCrady of Arkansas and Jeremy Vaughn, who is now moving into the fourth inning of work. Only two innings of work prior to today all season long, and he's now working into the fourth. We mentioned it, the regionals coming up next week. Four SEC schools will be hosting regionals but it's a new format where 64 teams are in there will be 16 total sites four teams at each site winners will advance to super regionals june 4th through 6th those will be just two teams per site and the best two out of three weekend series the winners of those two out of three series will advance to the college world series in omaha It'll be interesting to see if the SEC can get seven. A lot of people think everybody out of the West is already guaranteed a spot. I agree with that. The question becomes, out of the East, who do you take? The only option in, in reality has to be South Carolina, and I believe they're a bubble team at this point, but the reputation of this league might be good enough to get them in. It may be. The, you know They tend to look at numbers so much, Dave, and, and not always reputation. You look at the RPI rankings, Alabama, Auburn, Mississippi State, LSU, Arkansas, and Ole Miss all in the top 40. As a matter of fact, most of them in the top 20. South Carolina is number 41 in the RPIs, Dave. I, I think they needed to have a stronger showing at this tournament rather than losing their first two games. Still, head coach Ray Tanner, an outstanding coach. It's a historically good program, especially the last few years. They're really on the bubble. There's not much more you can say than they're really sitting hard on that bubble. All right. Innings four, five, and six coming your way, courtesy of one Darren Sutton. Thank you, sir. Mike Poley, Brian Kirby, and Brad Hagedorn facing Jeremy Vaughn, who has now worked three innings, and he has topped his season total by an inning. Coming into this game, the redshirt freshman right-hander had worked one inning against Niagara back on March 7th in a 27-0 win, and one inning versus UAB on April 28th in a 22-5 win. That was it. That one is skied to the right side. Jeremy Brown steps away from first base, and he is automatic. How much of a scouting report right fielder, do you get on Jeremy Vaughn and, and does that work to his benefit knowing that there hasn't really been much 
to write about. Oh, no, absolutely. I think that's why we saw so many strikeouts early on because hitters were baffled. They didn't know what to expect. Some of his own teammates don't know what to expect. Because most of the work, as we get a look at Brian Kirby pop one foul, most of the work that he does is in the pen. And once again, we talk about the importance of his pitching coach, and Jim Wells handles his own pitchers and the work that he does with his with his guys down in the pen. And this is a day where he lives out there on the mound just a little bit more with his pitcher. Kirby swings right through that one. Now two for 17 on the tournament, but he does have five RBIs. Razorbacks as a team in this tournament, they're five games hitting just over 250, but we sold you. 23 of 23 in stolen bases, and now 35 of 36. The entire field in the tournament is. It's been a tough go for catchers. The one, two. Popped out of play to the left side. Boyd lets it go. And Jeremy Vaughn is just. It's fun to watch a young man like that. I know Jim Wells told you, and I thought it was great. He was talking about his intelligence. He's the smartest guy on the team. He was Tate High School's valedictorian, the president of his group of the National Honor Society. He's on a full academic scholarship. One, two, hit to the right side. That's a base hit. And a good job by Brian Kirby, keeping his way back and then finding the hole on the right side. I asked him, I said to Jim Wells, I said, what do you expect from Jeremy Vaughn? Do you have any idea what to expect? And he says, all I know is he'll be the smartest guy on the field. <laughs> That's done him well thus far. He, he's made very smart pitches to this point. In high school, Jeremy Vaughn and GPA of 4.275. He went over the 4.0 with the extra classes. That would be that would uh, be more than double mine. <laughs> Hagenor pops that one foul to the right side and out of play. And he hopes after today it's more than double his ERA as well. More than double yours. Let's not get into my academic career. <laughs> and. He has a 3.8 right now, and he's pursuing a degree in aerospace engineering. That's territory I don't know anything about, my friend. But you've seen the shuttle take off before, right? Hey, look, it's the shuttle. You can join in the conversations with him. Go over to first. You have that in common. You have seen the shuttle on TV, right? I think that was a shuttle. I'm not sure. I know you don't fly because you're always driving your Yugo. So that's a, you know, if he was into automobile engineering, you could talk about that. Well, you know, the only good thing about Hugo is the fact that you got to buy two. You got to have one for the parts to keep the other one running. <laughs> but they don't make them anymore, exactly. And you wonder why. Kelly Gullich, that was a very fun moment right there. He blocked up that last pitch, and the Alabama faithful appreciating the work he's doing behind home play gave him a nice ovation. One and one the count. Kirby off first. He's three of six this year in stolen bases, but he was taking off to second base. And that's a souvenir. Thank you for your safety, we ask that you please do not sit on the wall separating the field from the playing surface. Thank you. Hagenor coming in at 282. Plays sparingly, but especially when Wes McCrady pitches on the mound, which is every weekend. McCrady otherwise will play first base, and Hagenor will come off the bench as a pinch hitter. The right-hander takes down low from the freshman. Two and two the count. The crowd wants a strikeout. Snap throw over to first base. Alabama on this tournament hitting 291. Arkansas 254. The Alabama ERA, the second highest in this tournament at 5.67. That one sky to the right side as they just try and hang with Jeremy Vaughn. That man just helps himself to the field. Let's to go get a souvenir. Get over that wall, young fella. Get over. There you go. Guy just decided that he would just leave the confines of the stands and make himself a part of the game. Jeremy Vaughn, that was pitch number 76. 
something to keep an eye on as we approach 100, especially for Anderson. A few innings all year. Pop foul back towards the Alabama dugout and out of play. Kelly Gullich gave it a long run. He would think, Dave, that'd be the magic number. But this is a young man that Jim Wells, if he's throwing strikes and keeping them in the ball game, he'll go off Vaughn's heart. He'll, he will respect his opinion. You're going to have to tear the baseball out of his hands, though, if he's throwing well. I guarantee you that. Well, this tournament is a prime example when coaches say you may not be playing right now during the regular season, but you got to keep yourself ready for the postseason. This is a prime example of what the coaches talk about. That one misses outside. Because you're going to get an opportunity. You're going to get an opportunity. I don't care if you play three games out of the winner's bracket. If you bring 25 guys to the park, they play. All You will play at some point in the tournament. <laughs> Absolutely. Snap throw over. Brown thought he had his man. And the other thing that's important to remember as the game goes on and if Vaughn continues to succeed, that this is a tryout for the next step as we take a look. Alabama pitchers have picked off 10 runners this season. That was a pretty close to being number 11. Runner goes back up the middle, hits Vaughn, goes in, it's a just. Makes the play and throws in time for the out. Well, we talked about Sam Bozanich, his struggles at the plate. This is why you will never take him out of the lineup. From his knees makes the out. That ball hit Jeremy Vaughn. Bozanich dives back to his left, makes the stab, and throws a strike from his knees to Jeremy Vaughn. Big time playing. We talked about it during a commercial break earlier today. This tournament has provided more defensive highlights than we have seen in a long, long time. No, there's no doubt about it as we watch Mark Burnett step in. I think there's a couple of reasons why, Dave. That one catches the outside corner. I think the pitching is better this year. The bats have made a difference in that, but pitchers are throwing strikes, and you're going to see more defensive plays in a 7-6 or 3-2 game than in one that's 27-14, where pitchers are nibbling and guys are hitting the ball out upstairs. We were talking about the... Uh, the brilliance of Jeremy Vaughn on the mound. Well, this is kind of the battle of the minds between Burnett and Vaughn. <laughs> Burnett was valedictorian of Bryant High School in Arkansas and was a member of the National Honor Society. And we spoke moments ago of what Vaughn has been able to accomplish in his academic career. Oh, boy, right through there. There is more brain power between Burnett and Vaughn than I think I can ever remember being around right now. I feel like I'm in an honored company. <laughs> for the National Honor Society meeting in the <laughs> SEC Tournament Championship game. <laughs> Why are we here? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Runner off second. One, two. Off the end of the bat, the left center field. McClanahan running, grabbing for out number three. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on base. It is a great ball game. We are locked up at two in the SEC Tournament title tilt. You won't find it. If you call and get our free videotape, you're going to see an effective workout and see how easy and quick and fun working out with Bowflex is. A beautiful day at Hoover Metropolitan Stadium just outside of Birmingham and a beautiful ball game as we end at the bottom of the fourth inning. Arkansas and Alabama locked up in two in front of a capacity plus crowd. Approaching over 100,000 to cross through the turnstiles in this tournament. And Wes McCrady continues to labor as he heads into the fourth inning. He allowed a two spot back in the bottom of the second inning. Kelly Gulledge homered. And then Scott McClanahan teamed up with Brent Boyd on a double steal. He was on third. Boyd was on first. And McClanahan came home on the throw down to second base. Gulledge stands in now. Checks his swing. And they say he did not go around. That's a good tight breaking slider right there that Wes McCrady throws. And we've talked about it earlier, how tough it is on right-handed hitters. Swings through it again. One and one the count. Here's the one-one. There's the slider once again. Gulich and his third base teammate. Brent Boyd played Little League Baseball together in Texas. And you can imagine they have been 
friends for life. They both played summer ball last year for the Arlington A's. You see that a lot, ties on teammates and sometimes opponents grow up together and have friendships together as that one just missed. Another good example on Alabama is the Southern California, the Bakersfield connection with G.W. Keller and Sam Bozanich. They grew up playing Little League against one another. That one just missed and a leadoff walk and a quality at bat for Kelly Gulich. Boy, he took a couple of very, very close pitches, pitches to Wes McCrotty. Jason Cox stands in. Two, four, and one for Arkansas. Two, three, and zero for Alabama. Cox, the designated hitter, is 0 for 1 and 1 for 5 with one RBI on the tournament. Slightly open stance, and that one dances down and in. That's the big slider right there, and it's so tough for many reasons. Number one, you can start it way outside to the right hander and nail the outside corner, but if you start the slider down the middle, it breaks right in at the feet of the right-handed hitter, and there's still nothing they can do with it. The only danger zone is leaving it belt high down the middle. That's a change up, and that's on the outside corner. One and two the count. Both dugouts just about on the top step in support of their respective teams, trying to win a tournament championship. That one gets away from Polk. He decides to eat it on down to second base, goes Kelly Gullich. That would be a wild pitch. That's a danger, though, when you have that big, sharp breaking ball. It's so tough to block up behind the plate. Let him play, baby. Cox has that slightly open stance. Let's see if Poley tries to go away with it. He does, and it's Scott to the right side. Three Razorbacks converge. Now Brian Kirby emerges with the baseball. That'll bring up Scott McClanahan. He singled in his last at bat and was aggressive on the base pads as he picked up Run number two for his team. It was a double steal going down to second was Brent Boyd and McClanahan after stealing third, steals home and comes around the catcher Ike Poley with an incredible slide reaching back and grabbing home plate. I wonder what his father Scott thinks about him playing for the Tide. He was a member of the, his father Mark was a member of the College World Series team of 76 and his mom was a cheerleader over at Auburn but yet here he is playing for the Crimson Tide. Probably some some arguments, discussions, you might say. right field, great piece of hitting. We may have a play at the plate. The throw in there. The Crimson Tide lead it, three to two. Just the ninth RBI for Scott McClanahan, but it couldn't have been a bigger one than he's had all season long. With one down, McClanahan steps up, serves it to right field. The pitch was out over the plate. He took it to right field knowing a shot to right would more than likely score his teammate Gulledge from second, and it was good enough to do so. Gulledge head first slide give Alabama, gives Alabama the 3-2 to two lead. Eric Smallwood stands in. A very good piece of hitting for another hitter who doesn't play all the time in Scott McClanahan. And very patient at the plate, kept his weight shifted back and just served it into right field. Only his ninth RBI this season. 0 for 4 in the tournament coming in and all he's done is single twice, steal two bases and pick up an RBI and score a run as well. That was pop foul and out of play into the capacity plus crowd. Now, you know, that's a lazy pop up into the stands and everybody scatters. Not our friend yesterday, though. When a sky fly ball ripped down into left field. Boy, he went after it, didn't he? We saw some, some folks going after foul balls pretty aggressively yesterday. And if they hit one down the left field line today, where that, that occurred yesterday, 
There. Oh my goodness! Look at how many people are out. That, <laughs> Our that friend is... yesterday would have injured about seven people with his effort if he made it today. Oh, Sky to the left side. Rodney Nye fights the sun and makes the catch for the out. We were talking about that play, Dave. I know it's your favorite play. I'm going to let you talk us through it. Foul ball yesterday. Keep an eye on our guy in the middle of the screen. Takes out his wife. <laughs> now rolling down the hill like a bowling ball. And the scrum is on for the foul ball. That was our play of the day. And so far, that might be the play of the tournament. That is where it occurred where yesterday. All the people are jammed in. If that happens today, he will have more than just a strike. So he'll have a lawsuit <laughs> on his hands, several of them. They have picked off. Throw down the hand steals it. Throw by Brad Hagedorn. Made the pickoff disappear. And McClanahan in safely with a head first slide. A good throw would have gotten him. That is three stolen bases for McClanahan today. He is per a perfect six of six on the season. He came in three of three. Brent Boyd now with an RBI opportunity. The tide already up by one, three to two in the bottom of the fourth inning. Boyd 0 for 1 with a walk. And a stolen base in this ball game already. A little spin move by Wes McCrotty. On the tournament, Boyd has a couple of RBIs, and he's 5 for 13. Still over 300 this year. Down in the dirt. Good job by Ike Poling. It's another young man in this Alabama lineup that's a natural pull hitter, but has really been working hard on using the entire field. And he's getting more and more confidence at the plate as we see more action around the second base bag. McCrady decides to hold on to the baseball. And I think that's the success of the college hitter when he really learns how to use his aluminum bat to his advantage. Whether it's juice like it was last year or different than it is this year, still the sweet spot compared to the wood bat is twice as big. And if you use the whole field, you'll be rewarded. Keep in mind, two years ago, LSU, of course, they had a powerful lineup. 188 home runs for the team. That's an NCAA record, beating BYU, who held it previously. This year, Alabama led the league in home runs with 102. Runner going to third. That one is chopped foul and out of play. I mean, you really, it's hard to compare LSU in any era with any other team. They just had nine guys in the lineup who could all go deep on you. But nonetheless, that's an example that the bat has been adjusted. Right. LSU, not the league leader in home runs. Alabama with 102. So certainly a dramatic drop off in the number of home runs hit across the board. Swing and a miss. He gets him to chase a fastball up in the strike zone. A couple of base runners in the inning. A run came across. One run, one hit. No errors. One left on base. Alabama holding tight to a 3-2 to two lead. Alabama by one. That's easy for me to say as we go to the top of the fifth it inning. It be difficult for me. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> championship game of the SEC tournament. Alabama leading it 3-2 to two over Arkansas, and Arkansas comes to bat, leading it off. Joe Jester, the table setter. That one nails the inside corner. Immediately after this game, I'm going to look for Joe Jester and ask him what he thinks about that. I feel like you're watching like WWF, don't you, <laughs> with a nickname for every hitter. Joe Jester, the table setter. I love the way you say it. <laughs> do it for me. I'm not. I can't do it on command. Hold on just a minute. One and one count on Joe Jester, the table setter. Chop to the left side. It's going to be tough to throw him out. He did. Brent Boyd used the harder surface as the tournament goes on to his advantage. Short hops it across the diamond and nails Joe Jester. There is no question that Boyd 
thought about doing this as he made the throw. He had his weight way back on his back foot. Didn't think he could get the transfer to the far side, to, to his left side, to make the strong throw. So he short hopped it over there and made a perfect short hop. And it was an easy play for Jeremy Brown. Rodney Nye, first pitch swinging. A tough chance in center field. Phillips and Keller cannot get it. And when you hit it off the end of the bat like that, Dave, that is just truly really a duck snort. No doubt about it. I still haven't got the official explanation on the duck snort, but this is it. This is, I guess, the visual explanation of a duck snort, one that kind of sneaks in, I guess. Texas Leaguer. All right. Nye will take it, though. So let's use Texas Leaguer. Let's just go ahead and use that one. See, those of you that have watched Dave Neal for 150 consecutive shows, first of all, you need to have your head checked. But second of all, you realize it's only a good idea if it's his idea. As Ryan Lundquist stands in. You're starting to get it, my friend. <laughs> After about 60 baseball games together, now you understand. And see, here's what a good color analyst says. That's right, Dave. You can see the hit zone on Lundquist. We'll show it to you in just a minute of where he likes the ball and where he doesn't. First to pitch. Slider on the outside corner. And that's one of the places where he has a tough time with it. You have to get it up and away or you have to get it up and in. He goes out and gets that ball down and away as well as anybody in all of college baseball. There you see right there the location. He didn't like the call because that's a pitch that he can open up and drive very well. Very few cold zones in the swing of Ryan Lundquist. That's what makes him such an outstanding hitter. Takes upstairs. Two and two the count. And what can you say about the man on the mound, Jeremy Vaughn, as he works in the fifth inning after throwing two innings all year long coming in, a red shirt freshman. Pops that one foul and out of play. And we talked about it, Dave. One of the most memorable matchups and advances with this superstar college player standing at the plate and the base is loaded and the roof about to cave in on Jeremy Vaughn had retired nobody and he struck him out. That and, had to boost his confidence. And this pro Alabama crowd, obviously being here in Birmingham, erupted. And that had to make him feel good. Gets it in on his knuckles. Boy, gets one. And that's all he'll get. Sam Bozanich, the right play, holding on to the baseball. But once again, another great pitch by Jeremy Vaughn. Here's a guy who doesn't have the command that he should have, especially with two innings. Hits his spot right on the inside of the plate. And you got to know that Vaughn's energy level today will be far superior than maybe any other time that he takes the mound for this Alabama baseball team. This is a situation I don't think he expected to be in. No way. Throwing in front of 15,000 fans here at Hoover Met for the SEC Tournament Championship. <laughs> Makes me a little nervous if you put it that way. Jack Welsh stands in. He's one for two. Strikeout and a single and a stolen base. He was stranded in the third. We're talking about teammates playing together, opponents in this league playing against each other and with each other in the offseason. Well, Nye and Jack Wells were teammates last summer for the Hardwick Mariners of the Cape Cod League using those wood bats that you've referred to. Nye was the team MVP and a league all-star by hitting 303 and going 2-1 and one with three saves. But he and Wells were teammates in the Cape Cod League. So many of these players will go to the Cape Cod League or to Alaska. Or the Jayhawk League. Don't forget about the Jayhawk League. I didn't forget. <laughs> you know, I'm a loyal Jayhawk League I know you are. Guy. <laughs> Brown lost the ball. Brown thought he had him, and he might have had him. Take another look. Watch the ball in Brown's glove. Ooh, that was pretty close. He actually held on to it. It looked like it might have fallen out of his glove. The right hand snuck in, though. And a good move by Jeremy Vaughn. Once again, surprising everybody in the ballpark. Nasty. One and two the count. And that's so hard, and we've talked about throughout this tournament, to throw against left-handed hitters, especially for an inexperienced pitcher, because there's no point of reference. To a righty, you can throw it right at his backside or his hip and let it break. You're throwing it to the air with a lefty. Throw over to first, and Brown does a good job just knocking that ball down, diving over Lundquist. 
Couple of big boys over there at first base. Pretty big collision. <laughs> the crowd sensing with the one-two count, the strikeout. They want it. That one just missed downstairs. Gulich did all he could to keep it in the strike zone. What a job that man has done behind the plate. Twos across the board with two outs. Alabama leading it three to two. Shot to the right side. Bozanich automatic goes to short way and gets his team back into the dugout. The freshman, Jeremy Vaughn, having quite an outing. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on base. The tie lead it three to two. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do it with strength exercise, and I do it with a bow flex. You know, if you're not working out with strength training right now. Another low scoring ball game at the SEC tournament. Pitching reigns as well as defense. That's Rodney Nye right there at third base. And the third baseman have really stepped up in this tournament. Look at this play early on by Rodney Nye. The bear for Alabama, Brent Boyd in the last inning using the turf, and it has been really fun to watch these young guys play spectacular defense and to watch the pitchers gain confidence because of the defense that is playing behind them and throwing strikes. The crowd really getting into it. Trying to rally Alabama to victory. The Arkansas faithful calling the Hogs on the other side, trying to pull their team back as they trail it 3-2. to two. One game, all the marbles. Alabama coming through undefeated with wins over Ole Miss Wednesday, MSU, Mississippi State on Thursday, and then Mississippi State again yesterday. Arkansas beat Kentucky 6-4, lost to Auburn 3-2, and then yesterday out of the loser's bracket. Part of that beat LSU Friday 9-8, then a couple of wins over Auburn yesterday, 9-5 and 9-6, and that's how they arrived here on Championship Sunday. And this is Sam Bozanich with a 1-2 count. Downstairs. Thank, you, Thank you everybody involved with uh, Hoover and Birmingham and the SEC office for this week. It has been truly fantastic. A special time to be here for this baseball tournament. It has turned out to be an amazing four or five days. It is truly remarkable what an SEC baseball tournament has blossomed into. Nowhere in the country will you be able to see close to 100,000 fans nope. show up for a conference tournament. But they're packed in here, and fans have just had a great time, and they've seen very, very good baseball. 3-2, good at bat by the man they call Sambo, Sambo Zanich. A leadoff walk by Wes McCrotty, and a good solid at bat, because now... It's the meat, it's the muscle, it's Andy Phillips and G.W. Keller set to come up. That's the kind of walk that can break somebody out of a slump as Tim Montez takes off to the mound to talk to Wes McCrotty, the pitching coach for Arkansas. But for Sam, that was a good at-bat. He was patient, he didn't really overswing at anything. He struck out his last time at-bat, and we saw him in the dugout a couple of players later and he was still frustrated. Maybe that's the kind of thing that'll get Sambo going for this Crimson Tide team. No, oh, it's a very good point. A real quality of bat. Anytime you can reach base, as you mentioned, and help your team, that's what you're looking for. Kevin Bent has grabbed the baseball and is warming up for Arkansas. Tim Montez having a chat on the mound. There is Kevin Bent. Andy Phillips is the man that Wes McCrotty will try to attack at this at bat. A tough, tough at bat coming up for McCrotty. Well, Andy Phillips on a 27-game hitting streak, trying to stretch it to 28. The longest in the SEC this season was 28, and it was by Georgia's Josh Hudson in the 27-game streak. It's the fifth longest in the, in the uh, SEC history. The longest hit streak in SEC history is 33, set by LSU's Todd Walker way back in 93. So Phillips trying to make it 28. McCrotty trying to Stop it at 27. Phillips reached on an error in his first at bat. Was erased and flew out the left. Downstairs, good play by Ike Poley. But we showed you where the ball 
needs to be thrown to Ryan Lundquist, and it's pretty much the same for Andy Phillips. It is tough to get him out. You have to get it way down and in or outside out of the strike zone. If it's belt high or even if it's up and in, he'll open up and crush the baseball because he's just so strong and so quick. You see it right there. That was right in the hit zone on the inner half, but he was anticipating. One and one to Kim. On the tournament, Andy Phillips. Five for 15. Got a double, has a triple. Matter of fact, yesterday he was a home run away from hitting for the cycle. Rip down the left side. Another great play at third base. Nine gets one. That's all they'll get. But what can you say about the defense on the hot corner this afternoon? Darren, I said moments ago the fans, the close to 100,000 have been out here this week, have seen great baseball. This is part of the reason. Defense this year has been the bright light of this tournament. Rodney Nye, once again in this game, which he's done throughout the tournament, coming up with a stellar play and almost got the double play. The, hardest, the man who runs well. The hardest double play to turn right there, the 5-4-3, and they nearly pulled it off. So Phillips will get another chance at his hit streak, and it hangs in the balance at 27 games after reaching on the fielder's choice. G.W. Keller reached on a walk in the first and singled in the third. 1-0 the count to G.W. 3, 89, 15 home runs, 63 RBIs. Takes a big swing right there. Just missed it. His 50 career home runs. Second on the Alabama all-time chart. Trailing only his teammate, Andy Phillips. And that's only in three years because he spent a year playing J.C. ball and he hit 11 at Bakersfield Community College. So in his college career, 61. Pops out and foul and out of play. And we're going to keep an eye on Wes McCrotty with Kevin Bent warming up the bullpen. And really what we're watching more than anything is location of pitches. Anytime a pitcher starts to tire, especially one with a little lower of an arm angle, everything drips up in the strike zone and gets a lot more hittable. But you know the left-hander wants to gut it out and continue to work. He's had a good game as well, matching up with Jeremy Vaughn, the two of them, in a 3-2 to two ball game in the bottom of the fifth inning with Alabama leading it. You're talking about a redshirt freshman and a sophomore in West McCrotty in the championship game. Speed pitch missed away three and two. Took a shot at it two two. Thought he could get him. Now let's see what he does three two. With the runner on first base. Ike Poley, the man behind the plate, takes a long look into the dugout from Tim Montez. And mixing up the signs. We know the location is in though. Gets it there. Keller grounds it to the left side. It's going to be a tough play at first. Joe Jesters. Keep an eye on Phillips. He broke early, but no fault of Joe Jester here. Just trying. His only focus was to go to first. That was such a slow roller that Phillips was going to be safe at second regardless. But G.W. Keller is kind of the quiet leader of this team and just exploded down the first baseline and beat out the throw. Jester didn't bobble it, didn't hesitate. Just the speed of Keller able to get him to first base. Tim Montez makes the trip to the mound as much as Wes McCrotty doesn't want to do it. He's giving up the baseball. Kevin Vent, eye black and all, has come into this ball game. We'll tell you about him when we come back. And the pitching change has been made, and Arkansas goes with Kevin Vent, the six foot senior out of. Mineral Area Missouri Junior College making an appearance for the Arkansas Razorbacks and for Kevin Vent. His numbers on the year 4.77 ERA, 3 and 3 record, making his 29th appearance. He started four games, but he is tied for the team lead with four saves. Dan Wright, the other guy with four saves. And by the way, Dan Wright and Reithmeyer available for Arkansas 
as is David Walling, if need be, for an inning or so, according to their coach, Norm DeBryan. But Kevin Vent will take over. He has struck out 55 batters in 54 innings of work. He's also walked 36, given up 11 doubles. Opponents hit a paltry 227 against the senior. And a guy that could probably give him a couple of quality innings, and that's what they're looking for. Let's get it to the eighth, and we'll go from there. That's exactly what they're looking for. Tim Montez, and we've seen this more and more with the coaches, stays out on the mound during the entire warm-up process, then calls a meeting with his infielders, his pitcher, and his catcher to set up the situation with runners on first and second. And one out. Bent is actually making his fourth appearance of this tournament. All of them have been in relief. He has a couple of saves. He's done a real good job in this tournament. Three innings of work. He's only allowed one run, the ERA and the tourney, an equal, an even, I should say, 3.00. But I got to tell you, Dave, my favorite thing right now about Kevin Vent is the awful looking eye black, the game eye black that he has under his eyes out there. <laughs> he wants it. Way in front of the plate, nothing that Foley could do about that. Runners on second and third for the Crimson Tide with one out. A real good start for Kevin Vent. Just came with the breaking pitch. Gripped it way too hard. Tried to really snap one, and he did. There's head coach Norm DeBryan, a thousand game winner. Right through there to Jeremy Brown. Newton DeBryan, a guy that has seen a lot of close baseball games, been in this position many, many times before. It'll be tough to get him. Rip to right field by Jeremy Brown. One run is in. They will send the runner to the plate. And no play. And on to second after missing the cutoff, man, goes Jeremy Brown. They love it. Here at the Hoover Men, it is 5-2 to two tie. The freshman record holder for home runs and RBIs just added a couple of more. The single to right, but Kirby overthrows his cutoff man. Phillips scores easily. Behind him, G.W. Keller will score. And they continue to add to their totals on the all-time list. An Alabama run scored, but when the cutoff man was missed on the throw from Kirby, Brown took off. Kelly Gullich stands in and checks his swing for strike one. We talked about Jeremy Brown and his desire to pull the baseball. First a swing and a miss. Another sign of maturity for this man who is already way beyond his years as he hits that ball to right field. It's his natural tendency to want to pull the baseball. He knew he needed to put it in play, and that was a great at bat, followed by great base running. One and two, the count to Gulich. That one just missed, and we told you about what happened yesterday with Kelly Gulich. How about today? The bomb to left field. That one leaves the yard. Look at the emotion at the plate. You love to see that. That was the start for the Alabama Crimson Tide, their first run of the ball game. He's a leader behind the plate, and his job's so important today with the man on the mound and the freshman Jeremy Vaughn, but he also helped out his battery mate as well. Good at that, boy. He was in a hole, and he battled back to earn a walk. And excitedly runs down to first base. Kevin Vent walking. Gullich there. He has seen Alabama twice this year. He's an 0-1 record against the Crimson Tide. Pitching two in the third innings. And he's walked seven Alabama batters in that two and a third innings of work. Jason Cox takes one right down the middle for strike one. He's over two, ground out and fly out. Dan Wright has grabbed the baseball and is getting loose for Arkansas down in the pen. Big cut, strike two. 
Waiting on deck, Scott McClanahan, who has been perfect this afternoon. He'd love another shot. Put a few more runs on the board for the Crimson Tide. The shadows, too, now around home play will start to make a difference. Now that one back. Almost creeping in between the pitcher's mound and home play. There you see right there. So the ball very soon will be coming from sun to shadow back to sun. Right now the cloud cover made them disappear for just a moment, but that won't last for long. Beautiful ballpark, but with the overhang, the shadows can be tough around this time of day. Off the end of the bat to the right side. Tough play for Kirby and Burnett. They get together. Burnett grabs it. A big out right there by Kevin Vent with the runners on first and second. Now with two outs. There's a good shot right there, those shadows from where we're sitting with the cameras. And it makes it tough, too, at third base if you're Rodney Nye. He's in and out of the shadows all the time out there. McClanahan, we just told you, has three stolen bases already today. He's driven in a run, scored a run, and has a couple of singles. Check the swing, good fastball on the inner half. And who would have thought before this ball game started that Jeremy Vaughn, with all of two innings of experience this entire season, would outlast Wes McCrotty, who was 5-1 for Arkansas and worked 78 innings. Good ones as well. Shot back up the middle. Tough play for Chester. He can't get rid of the baseball. He wanted to flip to Burnett, and he wanted to over and over again. He just couldn't get it out of his glove. Then he thought about first, and everybody's safe. Right back up the gut, Joe Jester thought about backhanding it when he bobbled it. Then he tried to throw to first and made a bluff throw, hoping that he could get Jeremy Brown coming down the third baseline. Didn't work. Big swing by Smallwood. Score that one a single. That would have been a tough play anyway, as far as he had to come across the middle. From what we've seen this week, though, I'd, he probably would have been able to make the play and not bobbled it. 1-1 one, one to Smallwood. Nasty on the inside corner. Had some juice on it as well. Blew him away on an 87-mile-an-hour fastball, but more action for the tie. Two runs, three hits, no errors, three left on base. We'll be back with more action in the top of the six, 5-2 tie. Arkansas looking to get the engine rolling. They trail it 5-2, but they have had the engine rolling all season long. What a year it has been for the Razorbacks. Regular season champs, Norm DeBryan in his 30th season with the program, the coach of the year, SEC, 22 wins. And Dave, this is the most amazing thing to me. Not only do you win series in the SEC, but you sweep five three-game sets in the SEC. Records continue to fall for this Arkansas team. And, and you know what they are? They are a reflection of their head coach. They're not gaudy, they're not cocky. They just go about their business. It's a team effort. We heard him talk about one game, the top of the order, will pick up the bottom of the order. The bottom of the order will pick up the top of the order. they will have to go to the bullpen early and the middle relief will get the job done and save the club. The starters will go nine innings and pitch a complete game. You know, you gotta have all the facets working together on your baseball team to win this many games and be this successful. He's got it done in 1999. No, it's exactly right. As we look at Scott Cross and take ball one. I think yesterday, too, was a good example of players laying it on the line for the coach. And that one is drilled to center field. G.W. Keller has some real estate, though. Hauls it out the warning track. And we told you Scott Cross doesn't have much power. He showed some right there. But he looked at guys, Dave, on his bench that had not been able to do anything for the team all year long just because there's only so many innings to play in. And not only did they deliver, but they carried the team to the championship. That's a reflection of players playing for a coach that they know goes to battle for them. 
talk about guys battling Darren. Jeremy Vaughn for Alabama has battled today. We talked about it over and over, and we don't want to beat the thought down, but simply put, he's as long as he's out there. He's thrown two innings this season, and he is now up to 101 pitches. That one's hit to center field. D.W. Keller goes to work again and makes a great play. That was pitch number 102, and once again, good defense. Well, you talk about it. Kelly Gulich told me anything after three innings is gravy. I bet you he never imagined his man would be standing out there in the sixth inning with two outs, and right now in cruise control. Sky to center field. Keller goes after it again, along with McClanahan. Keller makes the play. For the first time today, three up and three down. Alabama sits down Arkansas. T.W. Keller puts on a defensive show. Jeremy Vaughn is flat out dealing. It is the freshman's day. Alabama leads in five to two. Bottom of the sixth inning on a beautiful Southeastern Conference, Hoover Metropolitan Stadium, State of Alabama Day. We are at the SEC Tournament Championship game, and the Crimson Tide lead the Arkansas Razorbacks 5-2. to two. Arkansas, the regular season champions in 1999, trying to pull the double in both the regular season championship and the tournament championship. Alabama won the... SEC tournament, 95, 96, 97, gave way to Auburn last year, so they're trying to reclaim a tournament championship here in 99. We talked about it earlier, too. Arkansas made it this far last year to the title game, but came up short against Auburn, and they've been dying to get back here ever since, especially Ryan Lundquist, who was injured last year. Brent Boyd, Sam Bozanich, then Andy Phillips for the Crimson Tide. Boyd 0 for 2. He walked and stole the base, though. On the tournament now, he is 4 for 14 with a couple of RBIs. Kevin Bentz out on the mound and works. That pitch just missed. Boyd slightly, slightly open stance, waves the bat around, and chops that one to the left side. Jester. Solid defense. Throws him in time for the out. Sam Bozanich gets the call to home plate. He is 0 for 2 with a walk. Had a good quality of bat in his last at bat. Still looking for his first hit of the tournament. He has scored three runs, though. And been spectacular with the glove. Good pitch. Strike one. I really like the look of Kevin Vent on the mound. He is a, just throw it back to me and I'm going to bring it. Likes to attack the batters. That's a sign of a good relief pitcher at any level, from the big leagues all the way down to high school. They want the baseball, they throw a lot of strikes, and they're very aggressive. 1-1, one, one, right through there, 1-2 and two the count. I still like the eye black, though. What do you think about that? <laughs> Coming from a pitcher, you got to like it. I think that says something about his in intensity on the uh, on the mound, especially a relief guy. One, two, just missed. But it's not that it's just eye black. It's kind of a funky relief pitcher, bad eye black job. Somebody told him that looked good. <laughs> got into his kitchen. About a 62 hopper to second. Mark Burnett gobbles it up and throws in time for the out. That's a tough pitch, boy. He got right in on his knuckles. He couldn't do anything with that pitch. And that's the challenge that you talked about. You know what? I think somebody told him it looked bad, and that's why he left it on there. He doesn't want to look good out there. He wants to look intimidating. See, he has that clean haircut. Though. That's just, you, can't, you have to, the ugly look of facial hair going and the dangly, gnarly hairdo. <laughs> And then just bring it. 
That, Andy Phillips stands in. 27-game hitting streak on the line. That might have been one of the most graphic descriptions of, of any baseball player. Of Rod Beck? <laughs> <laughs> Rod might be watching now that he's on the DL. If he is, get well soon, Rod. Base hit. We showed you that hot zone call a moment ago for Andy Phillips, and we talked about if you're going to get it in, you have to get it way in and off the plate. That's the example right there. He can open up and handle that inside pitch as well as anybody. I know he doesn't care about it right now, but he will at the end of this game. But Andy Phillips with that strike extended his hitting streak to 28 games. Tying Josh Hudson for the longest this season. Josh, a member of the Georgia Bulldogs. 28 game hitting streak. Now he's off first with G.W. Keller standing in who takes strike one. Another typical ho-hum afternoon for Keller. Walk in the first, singled in the third, singled and scored in the fifth on Jeremy Brown's two RBI single. Throw back to first. We told you about Phillips, where he likes the baseball. We've told you about Lundquist. That one misses outside. Here's a look at where G.W. Keller likes and does not like the baseball. If you get it up high enough, he'll chase it. But anything below the letters, unless it's way down and in at the shins, he will hurt you and hurt you bad. Sends that one to right field and deep. Kirby almost made a spectacular play. In comes Andy Phillips. A triple for G.W. was smoked. Darren, they're going to give Kirby or cross it an error on this. On the run, he had it in the mitt of his glove and it just fell out. On the run, then Phillips scores as he was running with two down. There's no way that should have been an error. Absolutely no way. That's a spectacular play against the warning track, up against the wall if he catches it. And it's snow coned off of, the, off of an outstretched arm. Great effort out there, but G.W. Keller, a better effort going to right field with that baseball. Rip by Jeremy Brown. That one gets by Jack Walsh and trickles into center field. Another run is in. The Alabama Crimson Tide lead it 7 to 2. There's a double. Jack Welsh broke back before he came in. It sounded like, even from here, that this ball was crunched, but he caught it off the end of the bat. Welsh broke back, and that one extra step backwards cost him the opportunity to make the catch. He nearly came up with it, but that is a double, and the run scores. 7-2 now, Alabama. You see G.W. Keller coming right across. Boy, it is the middle of that order that is devastating for opponents. Phillips, Keller, and Brown. And Gulich stands in. One and one the count now on Gulich. Jeremy Brown, his last two of bats, a two RBI single. Picked up another RBI with a double. Keller has now reached base four times and scored two runs. Phillips extended his hitting streak to 28 games. He scored two runs, and he's reached base three times. Two and one the count on Kelly Gulich, who's reached base three times. A homer, two walks, and two runs scored. That one misses outside. Down in that Razorback bullpen. Junior Dan Wright has stepped up. Gulich way ahead, three and one. Rolls back to the left center field. That will settle into the gap. In comes Jeremy Brown, and Gulich stands on second base. It is eight to two, Alabama Crimson Tide. 
The third hit in the inning, it should be four. And they continue to pepper Kevin Vent. Kelly Gulledge is feeling it. He is in the zone, and you see he got full extension. Vent lucky that ball didn't get hit hard enough to get out of the ballpark because Gulledge can't take it deep, as we saw back in the second inning. But Jeremy Brown comes around to score. And right now, Alabama is extending their lead to 8-2. to two, And Dan Wright, down in the bullpen, continues to work. There is Dan Wright. And a pinch hitter for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Antonio Bostic, wearing number three on his back, stands in. See what he's done on the tournament on the year. 357, no home runs, 14 RBIs. With a runner in scoring position, the left-hander has a chance to do some damage. More than likely, Antonio will stay on the rest of the game and replace Jason Cox as a designated hitter. As the lead gets a little more comfortable, expect the tie to give some other folks opportunities to get ready for postseason play at the next step, where both of these squads will be going and hosting regionals. But Alabama will not feel comfortable with the lead because, remember yesterday, they you nearly get, blew it to Mississippi State. They led it 11-5, 11-6, and final being 12-11. Way upstairs, we saw Tim Montez just a moment ago getting a look at his Arkansas pitching staff. What a job this man has done this year. A lot of the credit a lot of times goes to the offense, but you don't win the SEC regular season title without pitching. And that was a good pitch right there, nailing the inside black. But that doesn't mean there wasn't a big-time effort this inning by the Crimson Tide. We take another look at the pitch. Three runs, three hits, one error, and one left on base, and that one dove into the inside corner. It's eight to two, Alabama, Arkansas, and this is our last college baseball game of the year from the Southeastern Conference right here on SEC TV. And it has been such a great year, not only for baseball, but for all events in the Southeastern Conference. And this right here, Dave, typifies it. The national championships in this conference. Football, Tennessee, cross country, Arkansas. No surprise there. Indoor track, Arkansas. Swimming and diving, Auburn on the men's side. Women, and who will ever forget what Florida did, what Florida did winning the national championship on the soccer field and swimming and diving, the University of Georgia. And what a year for the SEC. And they're continuing to play for national championships in men's tennis. Florida plays at UCLA today, LSU at Duke, Georgia at Baylor, Ole Miss plays Illinois. In the quarterfinals of men's tennis championships in Athens, the semifinals are tomorrow, and the finals are scheduled for 5 o'clock on Wednesday. So the SEC still in the big hunt for a national championship. There is the commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, Roy Kramer, on the right in the blue shirt, as he is witnessing the Southeastern Conference dominate athletically across the board. Today in women's tennis, Florida lost to Stanford in the finals of the tennis championships down in Gainesville, Florida. They advanced by beating Duke yesterday 5-2. In women's golf, Georgia just ran out of time. The Lady Bulldogs finished second at the NCAA Women's Golf Championships. Duke was declared the winner after they canceled yesterday's rain, uh, round because of rain. Georgia made up 11 shots in the East Regional to beat Duke. And they didn't have the opportunity to do it because of the rain out yesterday. But they finished second, LSU 10th, South Carolina 14th, Auburn 15th. And, of course, men's golf still yet to be determined. And, of course, track and field continuing on as well. Take us home with play-by-play. -play. You all set? Yeah, that's a lot of information. Man. My head's rocking right now. You need a breather? No chance. All right, if Jeremy Vaughn can go this far, so can Dave Neal. That's a strike. Going two to Brad Agadorn. And, of course, we are very honored to have the opportunity to, to be a part of the winning ways of this guy. 
and watching a guy like Jeremy Vaughn who excels in the classroom and hasn't had a whole lot of chance to excel on the diamond, do so this afternoon in front of 16,000 fans, which, by the way, this crowd today, I haven't got the final tally, but I do know only one other crowd has been bigger than this one at Hoover Metropolitan Stadium, and that was for the opener when Michael Jordan joined the Birmingham Barons. That is who plays in this ballpark other than the SEC tournament. That's a strike. Vaughn continues on with his excellent performance. One and one the count to Burnett. Well, they're fortunate to play in this ballpark and play on this surface. It is absolutely gorgeous. And to think how well it has endured 14 games. Pop fly, left field. McClanahan makes the catch. Two down in the inning. And here comes Joe. Jester, the table setter. <laughs> Thank you very much. You don't forget, you know, sometimes you might just on overload of so many games, you might forget situations, things said, but I'm not going to forget the table setter. Or step up Saturday. There is some knowledge that I impart very often to you, but this is a good example of that type of knowledge. Two things, really, this season that I am a very uh, appreciative of. Learning about the duck snort. Absolutely. And learning about, in detail, your college and professional baseball career. One of the best careers that anyone has ever had. One and two to Burnett. No wins, no losses in the pros. And four and eight in four years. Or I give myself a hard time. I was really eight and 12. I wanted to underplay it. I was eight and 12. Fouled out of play. Still one and two. But what I was, and that's why it's so interesting to watch this game, was a seldom used pitcher just like Jeremy Vaughn. And in a way, I've been out there living this with him today because I couldn't even imagine, nor could a lot of folks who don't get their chance in the spotlight very often, what it's like to get that opportunity. Not only to get it and the nerves to go with it, but now in the seventh inning to be delivering big time. Well, I'm sure if he goes back to the first five minutes of this game, he wasn't quite sure that he wanted to be where he is right now. And that is on the mound with the ball in his hand. Ground ball to third. Boyd fires the ground at first. Got it. Close play, but he got it. And that's a beat rather routine. This thing could be saying that about Jeremy Vaughn today. One, two, three inning. Alabama 8-2 over Arkansas in the SEC tournament title game. We move to the bottom of the seventh inning in the story. Jeremy Vaughn working now, having worked, I should say. Seven innings. And now Arkansas turns the ball over to Dan Wright. The big right-hander. Steps to the mound in relief of Kevin Venn, who relieved Wes McCrotty. And Dan Wright, 6'5", 200-pounder out of Batesville, Arkansas, Sullivan, Sullivan South High School. That's actually in Kingsport, Tennessee, but making his home now in Batesville, Arkansas. And Scott McClanahan will be the first to get a look at Dan Wright. He was 1 and 7, but a 5 7 1 ERA. Making his 24th appearance. Started four games this year and is tied with Ben, who just relieved with four saves to lead this team. He's thrown 41 innings and struck out 47. He's walked 25. Opponents hit about 250. And as we see with Mr. Dan Wright, he can get a little crazy every now and then on the mound. He has 13 wild pitches in 41 innings. And it's 3-0. and oh. 
to Scott McClanahan. That's a fastball in there for a strike. You see that 88. Big Dan Wright can get it up over 90 rather consistently. Shot to second, but right at Burnett. One out. McClanahan hit it right on the butt. He had the right idea, Dave. Like the harder they throw it, the harder it goes. And that was a good piece of hitting, just trying to shoot it the other way. Now, this man on the mound can flat out bring the baseball, and you're watching a pro prospect work. In the dirt, 1-0 to Eric Smallwood. Smallwood looking for his first hit. Alabama beat Arkansas three times in the regular season, all in Tuscaloosa. Scored eight runs the first game, 15 the second, nine the third game. Slow roller to first. Hagedorn steps on the bag, makes the out. That's a lot tougher play than it looks like, too. So much time to think about it. Third baseman, Brent Boyd. I need to correct myself over there at first base, John Paul McMurray. Slid in on us. souvenir for some lucky fan. He got a pitch up in the strike zone, a pitch that some might think would be tough to open up and turn on, but he absolutely unloaded on it. See where Poli is. He's outside. That ends up on the inner half, and ooh, he enjoyed it a little bit, didn't he? That ball was a no-doubter, and a little bit of Cadillac there by Brent Boyd, enjoying that one in flight. And he almost got it to the Hoover police car. Not quite. That's his bus. That's their escort out of here. He didn't want to hit that one. Brent Boyd, fifth homer of the season, but second versus Arkansas this year as he hit one back on April 23rd. It is 9-2 to Alabama. I really didn't think the score would be like this at this point, simply because Wes McCrotty's a guy that's been around, good, lively arm. And Norm DeBryan had a pretty healthy bullpen in terms of arm strength. And he came out with Vent. He got hit around pretty good. Dan Wright getting hit pretty good. A little blooper by Bozanich, and that's his first hit of the tournament. Finally got it. He didn't hit it hard, but as we talked about, anything, anything at all that gets in for a hit is what he was looking for. Anything to get you going. A blooper, a chinker, a ground ball with the eyes. We've heard the line many times in movies and games that are broadcasted, but that's exactly what the doctor ordered for that man to get his confidence rolling. Sam Bozanich, the second baseman, on at first. Two down in the inning. And Andy Phillips steps in. Phillips singled his last time up, came around to score. He's actually scored twice this afternoon, but 
the key for him is the fact that he continues his hitting streak. 28 games in a row now. Good off-speed pitch right there by Dan Wright. Wright, by the way, pitched on Thursday against Auburn. They lost 3-2, to two, but Dan worked six solid innings, allowing just two runs. The only loss of the tournament. Swing and a miss. One and two to Phillips. You've got to go back to April 2nd of 1999 in a game for South Carolina to last find a game when Phillips didn't get a hit. And misses inside, two and two. And it's funny, he was on a three-game hitless streak when he busted out and now has hit 28 in a row. He went five for six earlier this year with seven RBIs versus Kansas State. Swings and misses and goes down swinging there, and he's frustrated, nearly threw the bat through the dugout wall. But Alabama picks up a run on two hits. This, perhaps the biggest. A solo shot by Brent Boyd. Seven run, tied lead. Two runs in the second, one in the fourth, two in the fifth, three in the sixth, and the solo home run. The lone run in the seventh for Alabama. Two in the first is all Arkansas has been able to get. And they really squandered, I think, an opportunity there. Faces loaded, nobody out. Heart of the order coming up. And they just couldn't get more than two runs. And a new third baseman, Dan Chavers, checks in at third for Brent Boyd. And there is Jeremy Vaughn and what he has done. Five hits, five strikeouts. Two runs, both earned. And Rodney Nye steps in, high fastball swinging. Nye tried to lay off. Thought that was going to be a breaking pitch, but he came with the heat. See what you can do when you change speeds. That last pitch, 81 miles an hour. And he looked like he threw it 92 right by him. But when you're changing speeds effectively, that doesn't matter. Throw strikes, change speeds. doesn't matter how hard you throw, folks. Curveball strike. The first five guys in this Arkansas lineup who have been so consistent throughout the year. Three for 14 today. Burnett 0 for 2. Jester 0 for 2. Nye, the only hot bat, 2 for 3. Hits it down the left field line. The clan of hand makes the catch. 9-2 for 4 today. And here comes Ryan Lundquist, who's 0 for 3 on the afternoon. And was a strikeout victim with nobody out. And the bases loaded back in the first. And that was the out that really defined Jeremy Vaughn today, I believe. Back in the first inning, striking out. One of the toughest outs in this league. Absolutely. And you know that early on his coaching staff and his catcher reminded him of some of the things he accomplished when he was in trouble. He's really played off. Shot. Rodney Nye just steps up, says, throw me a fastball, and I'll hit it out to center field. Hit number seven for Arkansas today. Check that hit number six today for Arkansas. And here comes a pinch hitter for the Arkansas Razorbacks. John Voracek, a junior out of Bentonville, Arkansas. For Arkansas for Welsh. And he will Number hit for Jack nine, Welsh, the center, the center fielder. Jack finishes today. One for three. Voracek, 444 on the year. Not a lot of at-bats, but he does have four RBIs. Vaughn upstairs, 1-0. and oh. little example right here of later in the ball game, some young men getting an opportunity to get their feet wet in postseason play should they be needed at the next step where both these teams are headed. 1-1 one and one to count, Vorsek, big cut. And a big, strong guy up there at the plate, too. Vorsek plays, this will be his 19th game that he has played in. Hadn't started in it. And he's been to the plate. This will make number 10 on the season. He's made the most of his hits, though. Four hits, four RBIs. That 
to the for strike. Longfist over at first base. By the way, we cannot let this slip past and certainly don't want to overlook this because this is truly a remarkable record. Ryan Lundquist with his single ties Kendrick Moore for the Arkansas all-time hit record. He now has 282. And Jeremy Vaughn sits down for a sec as he strikes him out looking for out number two. And another strikeout for the youngster. Making quality pitches and hitting spots with a fastball. We've talked about it doesn't matter the velocity. He gets this call, too, because Gulich is set up inside and he nails the corner. What an effort by Jeremy Vaughn today. Six strikeouts now for Vaughn. been in the low 80s that's what, that's what we were told yeah. and that's what it's been throwing strikes all day long Her ball misses that was close two and one <laughs> to wonder too if as a head coach you're not just you're you're thrilled and excited but not like should i have used this guy a little more yeah you begin to <laughs> you certainly you begin to question what what did i miss here <laughs> Stairs. Runs at the three and one on cross it now. It's like last night, Travis McDaniel comes out and is awesome. The middle infielder for Arkansas. Chris DeBrine had to be one. Maybe he could should have pitched for us a little more. <laughs> <laughs> Pitching's hard to come by. Throw back to first. Not in time. Lundquist, 13 of 13 in stolen bases. He's perfect this season. Doesn't run a lot, but very opportunistic. And that gets past Gulich. He just kind of took his eye off the ball and maybe got a little lazy, a little careless, and that'll be a pass ball on Gulich. And Lundquist heads down to second base. He may have been looking for another pitch because he went out there like he was looking for a slider, and they'll have a little conversation right here. Jeremy Vaughn came in. That may have been to tell him he was sorry. That's exactly what Vaughn did, I think. My, my bad. And he was looking for a slaughter. Yeah. He went out there with his glove, and the ball just kept going straight and hit him right off the spin guard. Well, it was a strike, and it's three and two, two down. And now Lundquist stands at second and cross it a tough out for the three-two count. Go back. Almost got him. His foot wasn't on the back. And second base umpire Tony Wall said, no, son, you weren't touching the bag. And a pickoff for Vaughn. Can it get any better for the youngster? We go to the bottom of the eighth. The tide in control. Alabama had to have some last-minute heroics in the tournament. They did it against Florida and All-American. Brad Wilkerson. Brad Wilkerson, the All-American, All-World, maybe player of the decade in college baseball. In the bottom of the eighth inning, a two-run shot by little use Jeff Drag, who has been redshirted this year due to injuries. But Alabama provided some lightning last year in the tournament. Ended up getting knocked out before the championship tilt. But this year... They look like it's going to be their year to reclaim the SEC crown. 
What a moment that was I in SEC never. tournament history. B.W. <laughs> Keller steps in. Here is Jim Wells. Great moments he has witnessed in Alabama baseball history since he took over this program in 95. Check swing, got him. Dan Wright gets the strike out of G.W. Keller. Some changes defensively for Arkansas. Borsek out in center field. He replaces Jack Welsh. Out in right field, Jeff Fletcher replaces Scott Crossett. And behind the plate, Blom takes over for Ike Poley. Greg Blom, a junior out of California and Riverside Community College, catching Dan right here in the eighth. Jeremy Brown steps in. That's in the dirt. Speed pitch full ground. You mentioned Dan Wright, a pro prospect there, and we see why. He's got a variety of pitches, and he really has command of a good breaking pitch, and he brings a hard fastball to the table as well. Yeah, good size, good idea of the strike zone, very aggressive. Uh, he'll have an opportunity definitely to pitch at the next level, and he has all the tools. You mentioned the control, the three pitches that he throws for strikes, good ones. Ground ball foul. Jeremy Brown today picked up a couple of RBIs back in the fifth. Another RBI in the sixth when he doubled. It's two for four today. Three RBIs in the game. Hit that down the right field line. Just foul. Nobody up in that Alabama bullpen. We had a chance to take. There's today. a good shot of it. All is quiet. Jeremy Vaughn's ball game. It'll be fun to watch him in the ninth. Two innings. Two innings. <laughs> There's a little blooper. How about the play at second? Got him. Mark Burnett, who ended up in left field after he made the throw, got Jeremy Brown. And Jeremy, lucky he's not hurt because he hit that bad bag very awkwardly. But how about the play from our second baseman? He went so far to get this one. He was just dying off the end of the bat. And Burnett leaps in the air and throws. And right on top of the bag, both are lucky that they didn't get hurt because McMurray's foot was all over the bag. But a spectacular play. Look at him all over the bag there. And now you see right there by Jeremy Brown. I'm lucky I didn't break my ankle. Probably Pinch hitter Rock Mills steps in. Rock. For Kelly Gulledge. Gulledge had a pretty good day. A home run, a double, and an RBI. And he walked twice. He scored three runs. Two runs. You know, that's my other favorite man. Besides Rock. Joe Jester, the table setter. Rock. <laughs> You've done too much baseball this week, my friend. That's not a baseball name. Rock Mills. It's a lot like Darren Sutton. Not even close. But he's good. I wasn't. That's the difference. He's a good player. Come on, you had talent. Just not in baseball. <laughs> 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 I kid. I kid. Obviously, to, to, to play some You have some to have pro some ball. kind of talent to average two wins a year in college. Hey, you got paid, you got paid to play for a couple oh, of years. Oh, a real lot. Too. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I never did. Ground ball to third. Nine has been flawless. That'll do it for Alabama. We move to the ninth inning to tie. Looking for the SEC Tournament Championship. They lead by seven. We go to the ninth. Arkansas trying to rally. They're down by seven to Alabama looking for an SEC tournament championship. And folks, we talked about the crowds this year. They have been magnificent. And so has Jeremy Vaughn, the pitcher working into the ninth inning. Today's crowd, 16,165. 
through 14 games, almost 100,000 fans have come through the turnstiles. Congratulations to the Southeastern Conference. You guys have done a marvelous job. You found a great home for this tournament. Everybody involved has been spectacular. And if you haven't had a chance to get here to the ballpark, folks, I recommend it next year. Come. You will have a great time. And also, I need to say thanks to all the fans of the SEC. When Darren and I travel around and we go and spend some time with you guys, it's tremendous. It is great for us. It's a great opportunity. and We're very thankful to have the opportunity, and you guys make it what it is. Scott Fawcett groups it to right field. Smallwood makes the grab. One down. It's also an opportunity right now as we wrap up this game, potentially, to say thanks to the entire crew of the Southeastern Conference. Everybody involved, they did a great job. And also our crew, who have provided the pictures like nobody else. This has been a major league operation. And thanks to you guys. And here's a chance for the crowd of over 16,000, the majority of them, Alabama fans, to give Jeremy Vaughn a little bit of love. Some booing because they wanted the complete game. Get out of here and enjoy this ovation. That was a class move by Jim Wells right there. And here comes Jonathan Blankenship to try to close the door. Blankenship on the year, making his 28th appearance, 9-2. and two. Over the year, he struck out 79 and 74 innings of work. He's walked 30, opponents hit 238. He's only given up two homers in 74 innings. Tough to get it out of the yard on Blankenship. I don't have a whole lot to say. That was a pretty emotional moment right there. That was unbelievable. That was unbelievable what just happened right there. That young man doing what he did today and then giving way to Jonathan Blankenship. Strike one, so important when you come out of the bullpen, and Jonathan Blankenship gets it. There is our hero this afternoon, Jeremy Vaughn. That's fouled off at the plate, Greg Blum. <laughs> but there is Jeremy. <laughs> you know, everybody wants to contribute to a team. You, you know, you, you practice, you play fall ball, you work out with them in the offseason, and he never really had an opportunity. Now he can feel like he's a part of the team. It's stunning what he did today. It is just stunning. That's why I love college athletics. Jeremy Vaughn is everybody. Now he will have a chance to pitch some more. We don't think he opened some eyes today. No, he is everybody. Absolutely. And by the way, he's an aerospace engineering major, too, to boot. 3.8 GPA. <laughs> And he did it. He got the deep or the ERA lower than the GPA. If you could do that. <laughs> and there is the SEC tournament MVP, G. W. Keller. Ground ball down the third baseline, just foul. Two and two to Blom. He'll come back and do it again with one out here in the ninth. And G. W. has been consistent. And today he was two for three and provided a spark. Should be three for three. When GW hit a line drive to right field off the glove of Scott Cross it on the run, who dropped it, they gave Cross it the error. Darren and I both agree that should have been a straight up triple. 
But he beat out a grounder back in the right. fifth inning on just a routine ground ball that he just hustled down the line. Alabama would go on to score three runs in that inning and open up the game. Well, there's the two heroes, one of the tournament and one really unlikely hero. On the left, of course, Jeremy Vaughn, and that is G.W. Keller, a real spark plug. Some say the finest all-around baseball player with natural ability in the entire SEC. Jeremy Vaughn, the freshman with two innings, who was awesome today. And a walk. And Arkansas still alive. And, Darren, we cannot overlook what Arkansas has done. They had to go through the loser's bracket after dropping the second game of this tournament. This is their third game in 24 hours. They had to play a double dip yesterday and beat a rested and very talented Auburn team twice. They did so to get here for the second consecutive year. Just indicative of Norm, Norm DeBryan baseball teams and ever say die attitude, and that's how you end up winning SEC regular season championships. They, in my opinion, despite the outcome here, have got to be one of your four top teams to look for at the College World Series. I totally agree, and I also think it's important to understand how special these guys need to feel when Norm DeBryan says, in my 30 years, I have rarely coached a team with this kind of character. That's really all you need to take with you when you walk away from baseball, that you really turned that man's head right there for an entire season. That's a special, special compliment. Took something off of it, two and two, the count to Fletcher. Fletcher, a freshman out of San Diego, Rancho Bernardo High School. 305 on the year. Ground ball. This could be two. Oh, bad hop, Andy Phillips. Into center field. He was looking for the little backhand to Bozanich. But he got a bad hop. That might have been the only real bad hop we've right. seen off this infield in 13, 14 games. Oh, you see it. It's a gorgeous field and in gorgeous shape. But when you play this many ball games in such a short amount of time, it, it just naturally gets packed in and gets a lot harder out there. Not much you can do about that. But it's just gorgeous out there still. John Paul McMurray, the junior college transfer from Eastern Oklahoma State, J.C. in Monticello, Arkansas, steps in. Big boy, 6'2", 200 pounds. Came in at first base, a few innings back for Brad Hagedorn. Good pitch right there by the left-hander. Starts away and stays away, and credit Rock Mills with a good job framing it up behind home plate. Breaking pitch stays upstairs, two and one. There's one down and we're in the ninth. Alabama two outs away from claiming the 99 SEC Tournament Championship. But Arkansas won the regular season title. A little blooper over the first base bag. That's going to be a tough play. It gets in and a run will attempt to score. Brown didn't know where to go. He had no direction was where to throw the ball. But around the score was Greg Blom, who walked. And it's 9-3. Arkansas won't go away. And here comes second baseman Mark Burnett with two on. Well, he was turned around, first of all, because he was just flat out turned around. He had to run so hard and so far, looking over his shoulder. And it's tough to gather yourself. Credit Norm DeBryan right there. He never stopped waving his arm. Wanted to challenge him in that situation. He knew it was going to be a tough throw to pick it up and really find his bearings. An activity down in that Alabama bullpen. B.J. Green getting loose. This, this happened yesterday to Alabama. Right. They had a big leap going into the ninth, and the next thing you know, it's 12-11, and the tying run was stranded at third, and the third out was a close play at first. 
It's funny because BJ was expecting to be warming up in about the third or fourth to come in and offer some help out there. Probably never thought he'd be warming up in the ninth. Line drive, center field. BW Keller trying to double up. Almost made the play. That would have been something special. Fletcher almost got caught off guard as he when Strand is struggling towards third base and almost didn't get back to second. A great arm to a great shortstop, and Phillips right away got his attention and pulled it on low, bang, bang, play. They're on their feet at the Met. The pro Alabama crowd hoping that Alabama can close the deal right here. And by the way, those of you watching, on Fox Sports Net Southwest and Sunshine Network down in Florida. We will return you to your regularly scheduled programming as soon as this game is over. But we certainly hope you've enjoyed everything we've been able to bring you from the tournament here in 1999. And Joe Jester swings and misses. One and two. 16,000 on hand. Second largest crowd in the history of this ballpark. The only bigger crowd was to watch Michael Jordan make his debut for the Birmingham Barons. Just missed it stayed upstairs. John Magnuson has been around. Ken Couch, excuse me, behind the plate, has been around this conference and has seen some crowds, and he won't be swayed. <laughs> That stays outside. It's three and two. There's two down, two on. The tide lead at 9 3 in the ninth. Walked him, loads him up. And guess who is stepping to the plate? And Rodney Nye. With 20 home runs, 77 RBIs, and 19 doubles, and last year's tournament MVP to face Jonathan Blankenship. Nine this year is six for 18 against Alabama. Would love to go seven for 19. Rock Mills reminding the man on the mound that he has a six run lead and even a home run does not tie this ball game. Come after him, throw strikes. Let's see if our defense can make a play for you and let us celebrate. The crowd realizes who's at bat. And they're not real excited about it. That's a strike one and two. Nye takes time. The shot to short. Phillips to Bozanich. Got it. And Andy Phillips is going crazy. You think he won the championship? Alabama. The 1999 SEC Tournament Championship behind a stellar performance from a young guy who has only thrown two innings all season long. Works himself into the ninth. Jeremy Vaughn gets the win for the Crimson Tide. They win it 9-3 over.
over Arkansas. We will come back to the Met and put a wrap on things. Alabama, your tourney champs. The schools in the SEC play a vital role in the Alabama wins four straight games to capture the SEC Tournament Championship over the regular season champs, the Arkansas Razorbacks. 9-3 was our final score. We will come back to the Met and say so long. Stay with us. Good evening, ladies and germs. How many engineers does it take to change a light bulb? None. If manufactured... And welcome back to Hoover Metropolitan Stadium, where close to 100,000 fans have witnessed SEC baseball here at the tournament. And there is the championship going to the University of Alabama. And Darren, this has been a real special week. We've brought you five games on television, but we've seen a lot more, and so has that man, Roy Kramer, the commissioner of the league. Truly a great week of baseball, perhaps the best tournament I have seen. Best tournament, best fans in all of college baseball. This is the best baseball conference in all of the land, Dave. The two best teams, in my opinion, earned their way into the championship. Very different roads. And what Jeremy Vaughn accomplished today as a freshman was one of the finest things I have ever seen on a baseball field in all my life. It's been fun this year. It's a great conference. It's been fun working with you. The crowd continues to give their approval to Alabama, the pro-Alabama crowd, G.W. Keller, the tournament MVP, 5 for 11, a double, 5 RBIs, and he scored 5 runs. Not a bad performance. We need to thank Ken and Richard doing the stats here today. They've worked 127 innings, guys. Well done. Well done. It has been a truly amazing week as the Alabama Crimson Tide put a cap on things, collecting their trophy. We have seen great plays from around the diamond. And there is the trophy. Alabama won the title, the tournament titles in 95, 96, and 97. Gave way to Auburn a year ago and reclaimed it here in 99. And it was truly a team effort. Jamie Vaughn, Jeremy Vaughn goes eight and third inning, six strikeouts, six hits, two runs, two earned, three walks. He only threw two innings all season long before this game. Eight teams started. Alabama comes out on top. Don't forget the SEC Track and Field Championships coming your way Tuesday. 8 o'clock Eastern right here on your regional home of SEC Sports. We had a big crew. They did a fantastic job. Everybody, thank you for making this such a special weekend. Glad you enjoyed the baseball. For Darren Sutton and our entire SEC TV crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long, everybody. We'll see you down the road.